Toast! Good morning. Good evening. How Taylor. are you? <laughs> Good to see you, Taylor. It's, it's great to be here. I'm glad that you're on, man. It's it's been a long time coming. I'm I'm sure we'll get through that, you know, with all the stories and stuff with with a podcast script and stuff like that. But we met in TwitchCon, and uh, you yep. casted uh, my games, which you you used to call me Janu. Yeah. Um, and uh, That's right. yeah, and so I, I had to correct you guys. But, and what was even worse is I came over to you and asked in advance how to pronounce your name, and then I forgot. <laughs> I have it written down in front of me now. Gino. Yeah. Gino. Yeah, no, it's okay. I think Pestilli actually said Janu too, so it is a okay. It's got to be the Australian <laughs> accent, right? So It's the way we look at the, it's. It's like uh, the Aboriginal Australian yeah. pronunciation. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is all good. Well, I'm glad you're here. I want you to introduce yeah. yourself, Toast. Where you stream, how long you've been doing what you're doing, and uh, just a little bit about yourself sure well i'm toast rack tv i'm toast rack that's my handle everywhere toast rack tv and uh, i've been streaming for uh four i've been playing tarkov four years i've been streaming uh full time for almost three years and uh yeah I stream on twitch i have youtube channel and then i'm doing uh you know highlights on tiktok and let's go uh, I, they even let me on TikTok. I'm, I thought I'd be too old for TikTok. They let me <laughs> no, on there. It's, it's no, crazy. no, it's it, listen. There's they're they're definitely worried about much more on TikTok than a uh, <laughs> than an older person like yourself. That is that is for sure. Uh, where can we find you? What platforms? I know you mentioned Twitch and TikTok, uh, YouTube. You yeah. said you do content on, and then is yeah, that it? YouTube. Uh, I'm on Facebook. I've got a Discord uh, for my nice. fans. You can catch me there. And uh, yeah, um, YouTube. I saw, I saw a stream on Twitch and YouTube at the same mm -hmm. time these days. Oh, so nice. Tune in there. Yeah. And yes, yeah, stream almost every day. Uh, daytime Australia, which is like late evening US, uh, early morning U Europe. Okay. We're in. We're we're kind of in a funny time zone. I yeah. get a lot of insomniacs watch me live. <laughs> yeah. And regular people watch the VOD. <laughs> yeah, no, nothing wrong with that, man. You got to keep the insomniacs, you know, uh, entertained. That's just how it is. They're That's my people, funny. man. They're my people. Yeah. <laughs> Good people, too. Um, Toast, you've been around the Tarkov community for a while, but also the gaming community. Uh, for all you've done for everyone in the community, including me, you know, you were a very good person in TwitchCon. It was nice getting to meet you. Um, I just wanted to say thank you for being a positive soul and just wanted to welcome you on the podcast. I don't know if you have your coffee next to you, but I wanted to say hey. cheers to you, brother, because uh, that's that's what we do around here on the podcast. Cheers to you, man. Cheers, cheers. to you. Um, with that being yeah, said, I though, just made a cafe latte. Yeah, oh, beautiful. Oh my gosh, it's just exquisite toast you are, eh? <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. So before the questions, I wanted to get in the about uh, TwitchCon Vegas. I wanted to tell uh, chat a little story on when. So we've known each other in the Tarkov community for a while and stuff like that. But it was it was hilarious to me because when we first met, it was actually at the the Twitch partner party, and um, I believe you came up to me. And you ask me for a selfie immediately as if you were some fan of mine. But the truth yeah. was, Toast, I was like, <laughs> I'm a fan of this guy. Why is this guy asking for a selfie from me? Um, but I wanted to ask you about TwitchCon. How was it for you? And, uh, you know, a little bit, you know, how was uh, commentating and stuff like that? Oh, man, well, that moment is like, oh, it's, uh, it's, uh, I love this guy. I gotta get a selfie with this guy. I might never <laughs> see him again, you know. And that was that was my whole TwitchCon experience. Yeah. It was like meeting all the people I love watching on Twitch and have chatted to in chat and you know maybe played with or whatever, but never met in person. So it's like it's like a family reunion. Yeah, uh, going one hundred percent. You get to meet all these people and meet some of your top fans. Come out for it as well. You get to meet um, and make all the you know cement all these relationships that you already have. Uh, from online, but just being able to have a drink together, get a selfie together, actually shake at someone's hand is yeah. just so amazing. And, the the um, physical part of streaming is just not uh, talked about as much, right? Like, it's one yeah. thing that somebody comes in your chat and they're like, hey, I love your content. But when somebody um, comes up to you, like, in person and they say, you know, like, very heartfelt message, like, hey, like, yeah. I appreciate your content. It's so much more. It's like on a deeper yeah. level, you know, and you yeah. get a lot yeah, from that, from cons and stuff like that. 
you know yes yeah, it's very nourishing uh because yeah. you you if you're streaming every day you're uh you know you're solo uh so uh you don't get out much yeah uh, when you're a streamer and that, that suits most streamers that suits me yeah uh, but uh it is amazing to have uh those experiences you know sprinkle through the year so i'm looking forward to 100 percent in uh, san diego 100 percent. oh you're going to san diego i did that was my uh-huh. next question okay well yeah. we're gonna have we're gonna party toast that's all i'm gonna uh-huh. say we gonna uh-huh. party uh-huh. <laughs> that's awesome um yeah. moving on i wanted to talk about the coffee uh subject of the podcast i talked to your yeah. australian son which i'm sure we're gonna bring up a lot during this podcast yeah. um and he was a huge fan of coffee i wanted to ask you how, how about yourself are you a big fan of coffee Growing up, I never liked coffee. Never liked coffee growing up. Really? I was a tea person and I still drink tea. Uh, but uh, then uh, when I finished college, I traveled the world for a year with my girlfriend and mm-hmm. we went to, we wanted to have an extreme experience. We went to Egypt, we went to East Africa. And the first time I ever had coffee that I fell in love with it was in Uganda. So the first coffee was when I fell in love with it was at the coffee like there was a coffee company mm-hmm. where that there was ugandan coffee being showcased it was the best of the best the gold gold blend and i had an espresso there that just blew my mind it was like melted chocolate it was oh, so rich yeah so big so oily so yeah. uh, amazingly intense and that just changed my palate forever and then from then on any coffee I have is reminds me of that coffee, and and I just sort of fell in love with it from there. That's awesome that you mentioned that because I he's actually in chat right now, Sir Crutch. He's my coffee guy, so I call mm. him my drug dealer because realistically, <laughs> you know, you know, coffee can be considered a drug, whatever you want to consider it. I call him my <laughs> drug dealer, and he sends me coffee from all around the world. And some of my <sighs> favorite coffee that I've ever had was actually from Uganda. So I'm yeah. I, like the one that I'm on right now is a Papua New Guinea blend. It's my favorite. Mm-hmm. That is by far my favorite. But the Uganda blend is very, very good as well. So it, I'm glad that you share your love of, you know, you share the love of coffee like myself because coffee is a big part of my life, right? Like it's more than just a drink to me, right? And I, I'm sure you can, you know, feel the same way. It feels more of like a, I don't know, it's like a homey vibe, right? Like a, a very, yeah. it, I don't know how to explain it. Yeah. Well, catch up for a coffee is like, yeah. How you catch up with how, that's how you that's the language for yeah. um you know meeting up with people who mean a lot to you yeah 100 yeah. and outside of coffee what are some of some of your favorite drinks uh well i uh i love a cocktail so okay. uh i often make a martini on stream oh uh, and, that uh, sounds delightful so, uh, that's that's a go-to in moderation of course yeah um but uh what else i mean i also drink tea so i usually start the mm-hmm. day uh with an earl grey tea and then work my way up to a coffee and then I'll, I'll make a coffee uh, when I start streaming and uh, that, that'll that get me in, in, in the work vibe uh, and uh, I'll have another one in the afternoon. But um, it, I'll, I'll have a, a martini uh, late afternoon okay. and uh, or, or I like uh, wine, mm. um, you know, all sorts of stuff like that. Exquisite, so, uh, exquisite drinks, Mr. Toast. That's <laughs> awesome. I it, it was funny. It's not in the script at all, but when I was doing research, so I always do research for these scripts and stuff like that, mm. um, which I should mention, the, these scripts aren't like normal scripts. Like we aren't like reading directly off of these things. It's like a question sheet, but I have to mm. do research for a lot of these question sheets. And, and you know, people like yourself, I... I, I always do, you know, research, you know, when you started streaming, whatever it is, to get, you know, better questions. And one thing I did, That's the sign you of know, a good interviewer. That's the sign 100%. of a good interviewer. 100%. And it's, yeah. it's how I think, um, it's how I think I, I've done so well with it. You know, not just like in regards to viewerships or anything like that. It's just like genuinely sitting down and getting to connect with the guests is so much more than a podcast to me, right? So I do a lot of research. And like I said, when I was doing research for you, I looked up, you know, Australian drinks because I was curious. And coffee (laughs) was the number one thing that you guys, coffee and tea is something that you guys um, really, really enjoy, which I actually found a different Australian drink that is I'm going to ask you about in a bit. But first I wanted to ask you, you guys from Australia have some pretty crazy breakfasts, like, you know, Vegemite, and are you a big <laughs> breakfast guy, Toast? I'm a big breakfast guy. Uh, breakfast, breakfast is my favorite meal of the day, yes. breakfast or brunch. And, uh, yeah, I, uh, I I make toast, uh, you know, most uh, most days I'll have toast on stream. Often, uh, and the first slice will have Vegemite on it, and the second slice I'll go 
something sweet or something okay. else. But uh, we we grow up with Vegemite here, and yeah. it's not everyone's taste. It's savory, it's salty, mm-hmm. it's intense. Um, so, uh, but if you grow up with it from a baby, then it's just uh, you know your national dish. I guess that's pretty. I guess I never looked at it that way. I know Pastilli said he was a big fan. He was like. You know, saying how delicious this was. And I've heard nothing but bad things from Americans, right? Like, clearly, you know, we're not cultured over here, right? But I've heard some pretty crazy things about Vegemite. Well, see, Australians like to play practical jokes. And we'll often say, you know, just try a spoonful of Vegemite. You'll love it. You know, (laughs) It's it's like saying, hey, have a spoonful of soy sauce. You're going to love this stuff, you know. (laughs) It's like you might love soy sauce, but you don't drink it, you know. So uh, we, we like to uh, tease people like 100%. that. 100%. It's, uh... it's funny you mentioned that because I think with the Pestilli interview, he was like, I'll just have a spoonful of this right now. It's uh, that good. I'm like, wow. Man, I saw that. Wow. He's such a troll. He's such a troll. It's great. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, moving on, I, I already got your thoughts on Vegemite. Um, coffee is loved on the podcast and, you know, worldwide and, you know, like I said, Australia. However, I like I said, I did some research. Um, have you ever heard of a bitter? I guess it's called a bitter in Australia. I have not. I so have apparently, not. it's just like a a lemon, like lemon juice, lime juice, and water, and it's called a bitter in Australia, oh, yeah. and it's uh, a very popular drink over there. Uh, yeah, I know that is uh, lemon, lime, and bitters. Okay. Uh, Lemon Lime and Bitters is a uh, popular soft drink. If you're out at a bar or a pub mm-hmm. uh, with your friends and uh, you've, you've had some beers, you wanna, you're want driving, you want to <laughs> have a soft drink, you'll often order Lemon Lime and Bitters, which is yeah. Uh, yeah, lemonade, squeeze of lime, uh, or soda water, squeeze of lime, and Bitters, okay. which is Ang- Angostura Bitters, which is a, uh, a, a cocktail, a thing that's in a lot of cocktails. Oh, um, is it alcoholic? Yeah. Is it... Uh, I don't think it is. I think it's added to cocktails to add okay. uh, a bit a bitter dimension. Okay. Um, yeah, that's right. So okay. so it's in a few cocktails, but I don't think it's got any co- alcohol in it. So lemon lime and bitters uh, okay. is the is the name I know for it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah that's they, right. Well, I, also, I, I that was a bad English question. English will call yeah. beer a bitter. That the English will call say a pint of bitter to mean a particular type of beer. So it could be that, but we, we really? don't usually say that. But. Yeah, lemon lime bitters. So bitters is the ingredient uh, that goes in. Lemon okay. Lime bitters. Okay. That's well, yeah, yeah. No, I I did some research. Like I said, I saw a, a bitter, and I was like, "What the hell is that?" So I was like, I had to ask you about it. You know, it's yeah, I, yeah. here over in America. We have you know Coors Light and Bud Light. You know, it's uh, it's not <laughs> like we have anything exquisite over here. We do. I like you to have, make mine. You have craft beers. You have craft yeah. beers now. Yeah. You, you, you're, You've lifted the game. You've lifted the game. <laughs> yeah, we, we 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 try. We try. You know, <laughs> you know, America. Yeah, hell yeah. You know, uh, moving <laughs> on though. Gaming. I wanted to talk about gaming and stuff. Um, Toast. You know, you're Pestley's dad. You know, that's the that's the whole joke about it and stuff like that. Uh-huh. Um, no. He is also older than most of the gamers out there, uh, which is in, mm. in 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 yourself. You guys are you know older generation, so to speak. Um, when did you? Where did your gaming start? I want to know. Like, where did you guys start gaming? Yeah. Or well, you specifically. Yeah, it's funny being Pestily's dad because uh, he is most people's dad. Like, people call him dad <laughs> yeah. because he's, you know, in, yeah. in his 30s. So uh, people look up to him as a, uh older generation. Then I, I'm what am I? I'm granddad, I guess. You know? <laughs> yeah. uh, but it is true. Uh, gaming's always been part of my life. Um, we used to go uh, in the... Uh, so I was born in 66. I'm 50. I just turned 58 okay. yesterday, actually. Uh, and um, so I started streaming Happy when I was birthday. 54. But <laughs> thank you. Birthday. Thank you. We had, I wore a toast costume on stream. It was hilarious. I saw that. That's when I was, so I was doing my, I do my little research and getting clips and stuff. I was lurking and you had a toast costume on. I thought it was uh, fucking great. Uh, it was so That's awesome. It was like a cheap one I ordered from Amazon. It was <laughs> Hell yeah. But I started out in gaming when uh, a friend of my dad's growing up was in the computer industry, which was really small at the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he worked for, uh, this is before PCs, before home computers. Uh, it was all mainframes, um, and uh, he worked in computers. And we would go over for, uh, we'd all go over for dinner, and they'd have uh, a dinner party, and all the kids would play on the computer terminal. So he had oh, that's a sick. dial-up old-school computer terminal. You take the rotary phone handset, <laughs> plug it in two <laughs> suction cups on the back. It's like something from NASA. And it had thermal paper printer, which fax machines hadn't been invented yet, so I've never seen thermal paper. And a keyboard and we would log into the mainframe 
and play command line games. And the first, and the one I remember most is Adventure. So the original Colossal Cave text adventure. Um, so we wow. play, so I played I played computer games before video games were invented. That's before Space That's Invaders. That's crazy. Pong, everything in the in the 70s. Yeah. So that was so my first computer game wasn't a video game. It was command line. That's go sick. north. Look. You know, uh, take wand, uh, fight dragon. You know, two word <laughs> commands, and uh, that was my world. I, I still haven't finished that game. I still, I got to go back and finish. You got to uh, do it on stream. That game. now that you're I've a streamer, you're, you you got to you gotta uh, do it on stream, one hundred percent. That's funny. And then, uh, in, in high school, uh, we started getting home computers, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I taught myself to program from a book. And my dad and I were into we're into Dungeons and Dragons edition one came out. And we oh. were mad keen on Dungeons and Dragons because my parents were really into Lord of the Rings, the books. And um, so we were, we were playing Dungeons and Dragons on paper with dice. And uh, we started writing computer games, uh, sort of related, you know, adventure type games mm -hmm. related to that adventure game and Dungeons and Dragons. And, and those games, um, Dad started a company. We would sell those games on cassette. We had a cassette duplicating oh machine. God. Yeah. And uh, then they then also, um, and then we licensed the code to the UK and got published internationally in the back of a magazine. So back in those days, you'd That's buy a gaming sick. magazine and there'd be code in the back and you'd key it in and play free games. Oh my and, God. Uh, That's so cool. So That's... the game still exists now. It's on yeah. a, you can play it on an emulator. I, I played it the other day on the stream and uh that yeah, is so awesome on. you you it sounds to me that you were kind of like born into a gaming family before gaming families were even a thing that's awesome yeah. you I know? know i know so it's, it's 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 right back goes right back in my childhood yeah but it wasn't my career i i had one job when i was in college studying computer science i had a job uh, at a computer game um, uh, development company. We, uh, I have wo uh, worked on Lord of the Rings. No, no, The Hobbit, uh, a role-playing game of The Hobbit for Commodore 64. Um, but, so cool. uh, but I never, never went into that as a career. I just mm -hmm. had a regular, um, program, corporate programming career, uh, and, and went in that direction. So I left gaming behind for a long time until, uh, COVID lockdown. Yeah. And uh, I was, I was by then I'd burnt out from IT. I switched career to being a television editor. Keep up with me. <laughs> I switched to being a film editor, uh, but that all shut down during COVID because we mm -hmm. had really big lockdowns yeah. uh, where I am. And uh, I was at home playing Escape from Tarkov thinking, uh, and I've got all this computer gear because I'm an editor uh, and a gamer. And I thought, uh, I wonder what it's like streaming. And I just, just thought I'd try it out. Man, and it's been uphill ever since, Toast. So, so I gotta ask: with, with you streaming and stuff, I, I, I assume you're a full-time streamer. Have you ever thought about going back to film and stuff, or is that something like long gone? I, I, I've kept, I've kept those doors open. Yeah. Because I, because I see that a lot of people burn out. This job mm -hmm. has a lot of burnout. Yep. And I really noticed that even from the beginning, because I was coming in not late but uh, a little late like there's mm -hmm. veteran streamers around uh and some of them are at, you know retiring out burning out uh and and so i thought oh yeah this this does take a lot of time and a lot of energy um so keep keep those doors open but um you know i i started turning down tv jobs and i think i don't know that i think there will be something at some point mm -hmm. That I'll, I'll need to transition that or, or do something, mix it up. I don't know what, but you can't play Tarkov forever. And I, I don't think you can stream forever. I'm not sure. Yeah. Let's well, find out. Yeah, we, ha we, yeah, we haven't figured it out, really. I mean, the, the yeah, future yeah. of streaming is very up in the air, right? You always have to have the backup uh -huh. options open. You have to, you know, you have to always, you know, think about college or whatever it may be, right? Like, I, you know, yeah. I have so I'm definitely a few years younger than you, Mr. Toast. So I, you know, I always look at college as a backup plan or, you know, yeah. getting a degree or whatever it may be, right? Like it's it's scary sometimes, you know, looking at other streamers and stuff and, you know, you hate to compare yourself to them, but seeing, you know, your favorite streamer or something like that stop streaming because they're burnt out or they're moving on from it and it you know, it, it makes me, yeah. it, it's scary sometimes, you know, so I'm very glad that you brought that up. And speaking about scary, um, it, it has a little Before bit of a scary. On, yeah, go ahead. Before we move on, though, I think it's such a smart move to explore life and explore options 100%. before going to college, though. Because if you go straight to college, you always have in the back of the mind, oh, your friends are out there doing great stuff and earning money yeah. and spending money. And you're like, 
you're you're like sacrificing years of your life mm -hmm. for this potential mirage of a future better life and it's really hard to be motivated for that so actually having some life experience and doing other stuff before hitting college yeah um that, that really helps i think because then when you do go you're really choosing to go and you're you're a lot more motivated and you're a lot more able to to get 100 percent. and it, it speak about i mean I don't know how it's like in Australia, but here in America, student debt is literally, you you live with it, yeah. right? And yeah. that is one thing that I have promised to my parents and I have promised to myself. If I do go back to college, it would be community college or a tech school or something cheap, right? I I, I can't afford a university to where it's going to cost me $200,000, you know, for the rest yeah. of my life. Yeah. So it's just one yeah. of those things. It takes time, you know, and... Uh, yeah. I, I, I wholeheartedly agree. I think being able to see just the world before you move on to schooling, right? It's it's a pretty mm. bad, it, it, not bad, but it's 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 a scary place for a lot of, you know, early people or early 18-year-olds, 19-year-olds making, you know, decisions that are going to determine their life. You know, it's yeah. scary for yeah. a lot of people. So, yeah, 100%. You got to, you know, you got to live your life. You got to see where you want to go. And uh, it just... Yeah, it, it comes down to what you want to do and, you know, backup plans and stuff like that. But I'm glad that uh, I did start streaming. I'm glad that I've stuck with it and same with yourself because I want to be able to share a podcast with yourself yeah. here, man. So it's, it's exactly. good. It's good. <laughs> um, speaking about, you know, scary, though, in, in you know, future and, and all that sort of thing. Uh, we both share interest in Tarkov. How's the state of the game, do you think? How do you feel about it right now? Well, I was at DreamHack. I was actually at a convention in Melbourne uh, when uh, when the bomb dropped of uh, Unheard Edition and mm. and all the uh, and people got suddenly really angry uh, and justifiably so about uh, some decisions BSG made uh, and it was potentially game ending. I was really lucky to be with other streamers mm -hmm. and be able to talk and process our feelings and talk about what was going on with people like Pestily and Red Ops and uh, uh, Train and other Aussie streamers who were who were there uh, because it was a lot. Um, that was yeah. that was a big, how long ago was that? That's like it, it, three months it ago. It feels like three days ago, ago, but it's, I, know, I think it's yeah. like three months. Yeah. yeah, something around there. And, and we're like, what? Okay, what what does life after Tarkov look like? You know, <laughs> what if this game cancels itself? You know, and no, and everyone stops playing it. You know, what yeah. what is going on? So, uh, so that that was a real low point in the game. Um, and uh, BSG kind of kept digging. Once they dug that hole, they just mm -hmm. for a while they just kept digging yeah. and making it worse. Um, and I, I think they finally started uh, hearing. Um, their their player base and their fan base and and started making amends and and coming back in a, in the right direction and I, I played other games for a good few weeks um, yeah. but uh, but came back to Tarkov and and now it's the dust is settling more yeah one hundred percent and it doesn't in a rough place for yeah. a while there one hundred percent it doesn't uh, help that they like I said you, you or like you said you know. Um, just digging their own grave like the the whole like after the situation they they then like subtweeted arena breakout i was like yep we're fucking doomed you know <laughs> like we are we're not we are not doing good right now you know yeah. so just kept digging that grave but they have i think you you are correct i think they they've kind of you know made amends i think they've listened to the community i i said since day mm -hmm. one you know, everybody, like, people in TikTok chat, right, like, they got really mad at me for, you know, uh, you know, even saying bad things about Tarkov, and I told them, I, I, I said straight up, like, you should be mad as a, as a player of this game, you should be upset, you know, and I'm glad that the community came together for that, because it was, it was much needed, you know? Yeah. So I think I think the dust has settled enough for us to start getting excited about 1.0, this game mm -hmm. finally coming out. And depending how long you've been playing, you've been you've had a larger and larger number of broken promises about when that's going to happen. But it feels like it really is going to happen this time. I don't know. I don't know if I that's hope. just Stockholm syndrome. <laughs> but uh, you know, this is and it's going to be it's going to be pretty amazing. Like when one point zero comes out, all of the quests we currently have they're all they're all just side quests they're not storyline quests mm -hmm. there's the whole thing is going to change the whole game is going to be different and hopefully it'll be better i don't know how it's going to be but it's just going to be an amazing uh coming to fruition for many years waiting to see the actual 
final game and the final story. Yep, fingers crossed with the release. You know, we 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 can only uh, hope and pray at this point that Battle State somehow figures out a way out of this little hole that they've dug themselves into. Um, but mm. I, I think it has an, a, an exciting future, at least in my opinion, which is my next question. What do you think the future of Tarkov looks like? Yeah, I mean, Size it's still 1. my favorite game, favorite yeah. game ever. Um, and, uh, yeah, I think that's great. Uh, I don't know. I, I think we're, we're after 1.0, we're almost due for a new game in the Tarkov um, yeah. universe. You know, uh, Escape from Tarkov is the second or third game in the... Uh, in the Contract Wars universe, uh, I think. I, I'd never played any of the earlier games, but I don't know what will be next after 1.0. But I, I think 1.0 will be a beginning and an end, and uh, mm -hmm. I, I'm not sure what will be next. Uh, I tend to... M my play style of gaming is always... I get obsessed with one game, and I play that every day for years. <laughs> Maybe not four yeah. years, but um, I'll, I, I did that with... Um, like when... Uh, the first uh, Battle Royale I discovered was Armor 3 Battle Royale mod. Oh, yes. Right? Like, uh, around the time it was a DayZ mod and mm -hmm. a Battle Ro and an Armor 3 mod. There was no PUBG. This is before PUBG. And um, that that was my main game. That I switched to PC so I could play that game. Yep. I was on Xbox before that, playing Ghost Recon series, uh, okay. which is also a slow-paced tactical shooter. Um, and then discovered Battle Royale. Like, I, and I stick with that. I used to play that all the time. And then, um, then play PUBG, you know, every day. So I tend to lock in on one game. I don't know what my next game's going to be. There, there will be a next game mm -hmm. one day, I guess. Like yeah, that, there will be. I, I hope that Battle yeah. Seat can somehow release it without, you know, any $250 editions. That's for sure. But I yeah. did want to ask you as well. A lot of people look up to you, so, you know, not only for gaming, but, you know, doing it, you know, you game so well, but you do it in, you know, one of the hardest games such as Tarkov. I wanted to ask you, though, any favorites besides Tarkov? You know, you said uh, Ghost Recon was Arma 3, you know, the, the, that sort of thing. Yeah. But besides those yeah. games, like any favorites nowadays or just Tarkov? Look, I, I really enjoy trying out other games and seeing what's out there. Mm -hmm. So uh, in, the, in, the, in the dark period of Tarkov, I really love playing Grey Zone Warfare. That was an amazing, okay. exciting discovery to explore that universe. Yeah. Um, I even played Arena Breakout for a while. I'll play um, COD, what's it called? DMZ. Yep. Whenever a new one comes out, I'll play that for a few days. I, I, I love that. I also love, um, like, back to my adventure game roots, right? Mm -hmm. I like uh, exploring adventure games. So I played, like, remember Strays a year or two ago? The cat uh, where you game? play as a cat. Yeah, and yeah. And all the people are gone and there's androids everywhere and you're trying to discover what's going on. That sort of game, or um, 12 Minutes, remember that 12 Minutes game where um, it's a top-down like adventure and there's a, a, a murder and, uh, you, oh, yeah, and you play for 12 minutes yep. and uh, you try and solve the murder mm -hmm. or something like that. Uh, it's sort of adventure type. Game. Like, I'll, I'll get excited about games like that. Like mm -hmm. Portal was one of my favorite games ever, you know, really? that, that sort of puzzle, 3D puzzle mm -hmm. um universe sort of stuff so so i'll get excited about those sorts of games but mostly it's uh tactical shooters slow paced realistic yeah. shooters um because I, I and and heaps of games that other people love i can't mm -hmm. stand because there are three things i don't like in games that rule out a lot of games i don't like sword fighting uh, <laughs> find yeah. that dull just you're just swinging this blade <laughs> yeah. and nothing you'd swing this huge axe at somebody and should cut them in half <laughs> But all that happens is a bar floating above them drops from 79 to 74. You know, that is not, yeah. that's not what happens when you swing a sword at somebody. Yeah. It drives me nuts. Anything with swords, magic, I'm not into magic, and zombies, I'm not into zombies. And that, that rules out a whole lot of games yeah, for me. Yeah, it does. So, I was about to say, there's not a lot of games nowadays, you know, <laughs> that are that don't have those things in it. That's funny. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Everyone says, oh, play you if you like Tarkov, go play Dark and Dark. You're gonna love it. It's like, mm, has it got swords, magic, or zombies? Uh yes, yes, and yes, I think. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. That, no, you are one hundred percent correct. I never really thought about it that way. You know, somebody should die from a sword strike. You know, that should be a very yeah. real thing. I oh, at least the limb come off. Well, come on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 100%. That's funny. All that happens is a cloud of uh, special yeah. effects. Yeah, a little like dust. Dust yeah. settling off That's their body or something. Really dust 
Disney cloak. They've, yeah. they've just walked through a field of glitter and, <laughs> and now you're banging it off them. <laughs> I know exactly what you're talking about. Oh, man, that's funny. Um, I do want to ask, though, you know, we talked about the future of gaming and the future of Tarkov. Uh, what games do you have nostalgia for? Like, I know for myself, oh. Modern Warfare 2 brings back a lot of nostalgia for me. Um, mm. What are some games that you like? Or nostalgia wise. Man. So, uh, the, how long have you got? Because, you know, there's, there's all no, these periods got, of gaming. So we got forever. Command, if we go in, uh, in chronologically, there was command line, then there was home computers. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, no, the, first there was gaming consoles, uh, like, um, I don't know, you know, Atari, Space mm -hmm. like Space Invaders. I used to, on school holidays, I'd catch the train, go into downtown to the arcades and just go take as many coins as I could and play Space Invaders, Galaga, um, I don't know, Dig Dug, Centipede, Missile Command, like all of those mm. on stand-up uh, you know, uh, machines and just absolutely love that era of gaming. Um, then it was, um, but uh, then it got up to home computers and stuff like that, which I didn't play a lot of games on, I mostly wrote games. Mm -hmm. um, but then came uh, consoles like, you know, uh, getting, I mean, skipping ahead, but um, Nintendo 64, mm -hmm. GoldenEye. Goat. I just played yeah. that every night I could. Um, I was a consultant during the day, and I'd just go home and play uh, GoldenEye. It took me forever to get through it. I'd do it on hard mode. I'd do try and do all the achievements with the speed runs and all that sort of stuff. Mm. And uh, that was amazing. Then, uh, then got to Xbox, and Halo was oh. amazing. The original greatest, Halo Combat of all One of the greatest franchises of all time, in my opinion. Just the epic scale of the graphics, yes. you can't describe it now because you look at it now and go, whatever. But they just, everything was so epic mm. in that game. The music. And, the story, and, oh. and it was before before spoilers. So when, when you discovered, you know, you're fighting the Covenant for mm -hmm. half the game and you think that's the game. And then you discover, oh, I'm not going to spoil you, you know, yeah. discover the whole other race of yep. enemies. And it is lit. It is terrifying. You mm -hmm. remember where you were when you first encountered that enemy, and yep. uh, th that was just you know epic uh, proportions. So Halo, and then I discovered um, um, well Rainbow Six, the original Rainbow Six, okay. and Ghost Recon, original Ghost Recon on Xbox, and that was just my thing. I was so serious about that. I joined a clan. We had oh, training. Yeah. We had matches. Uh, you know, we had world rankings and stuff, and uh, that's and that's that's when Xbox Live started, mm -hmm. and that's when uh, it, it uh, I had to uh, choose a gamer tag uh, to uh, to go online with, and that's that's where Toast Rack came from really? from 2001, where oh, uh, when uh, <laughs> Xbox Live came out, yeah, uh, the original Xbox was standalone, and then yeah. the internet came next a year or two later. Wait, so, what like, year did you say that was? What about you... 2001 oh yeah 2001, wow I think. is it, yeah. it will it make you yeah. feel old that that that's the year that <laughs> i was born you know ah, like <laughs> no, it's amazing totally <laughs> totally yeah no the I, generations I, you know <laughs> it's 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 great that's awesome yeah. i i, I yeah. would i've always said to people that i would commit crimes to go back to xbox 360 <laughs> days like mm. uh, just peak gaming with your friends you know, uh, I know yeah, you you yeah. said you weren't a fan of zombies, but Black Ops Two Zombies has a very That's near and one. dear. Oh my god, no, I, I love it! The hell out of that. Yeah, no, I played the hell out of that. Yeah, because I was Just... I was really into Black Ops. Yeah, into mm -hmm. COD at the time, and uh, that was a lot of fun. And, and the first zombie game, yeah, that that was oh, re very cool. Just, yeah, yeah. Oh, this just such a good franchise. Halo Two or Halo yeah. Halo um. The, as a whole was good. Reach was my favorite. Uh, Halo yeah. 3, I never actually played. Everybody said that Halo 3 was their favorite. Um, Halo uh -huh. Wars was actually one of my favorites as well, which isn't necessarily mm. a Halo that's talked about. But going back mm. to what you mm. said about Halo and just like the the music, in my opinion, yeah. the best music in a video uh, game ever, right? Yeah. Like I can and hear so the home screen. To, yeah, yeah. That's, that's the home screen. Oh, that's our. Uh, yeah, 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 like, yeah, 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 yeah. And then the way it was uh, coded so that it, the the big moments in the music happen yes. during gameplay at peak moments in mm -hmm. battle and reveals and stuff like that. I'd never seen that before. That, that was... Man, they epic. don't make yeah. games like that anymore. I hate being that, you know, that old mm -hmm. dude that says that. But, like, yeah. they don't... They do not make games like that anymore. 
you no, know they can't like just... touch it yeah it's it's great yeah yeah exactly. oh yeah. man i just i'm sorry i'm reminiscing of the days a little bit there yeah. toast man it's just yeah. it, i miss yeah. it a little bit but we mm -hmm. got to move on um i'm <laughs> very very excited about this next part of the podcast i'm not going to lie to you i want to make okay so you know a lot of people in the gaming field mr toast um, I yeah. want you to give your dream Tarkov 5 stack. I'm going to stream something for you. Okay, so I'm going to pull uh -huh. this up for stream. And then I'm do gonna I need do... the stream open for this? Uh, you do not. Well, you would need my stream open. You don't have to. Yeah. I will kind of go down the list. But no, I was um, wanting to do that anyway so I could see yeah. chat. So yeah, you are all good. You don't necessarily need that stream open. I'm also going to stream it in Discord for you too. Um, cool, cool, cool. Uh, but I will stream it in Discord. I'm gonna uh, remove my camera so I can bring this up and then do this screen, and then I will do this. And there we are. I don't know if you can yes. see that well. One, two, there we three, go. Four. Yeah. I made a little like a uh, little thing for you here. This is your, gonna be your Tarkov cool. Dream Stack. So uh. you do not have to go in any specific order. I have also mentioned on the script that you don't have to necessarily, this can be the most fun you've had in Tarkov with somebody or uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, just, you know, somebody that you think is really good at the game. So I want you to give yeah. your, your Tarkov dream stack. If you want to start at one yeah. or start at four, whatever it may be. Uh, feel free I'll to start. start at one. Okay. I'll start at one, and it's going to be pestily. It's of course it's going to be the pestily. Goat. The goat. He is the goat. When look, when I first bought, uh, when I was first looking at Tarkov, mm -hmm. uh, it was I discovered Pestily's YouTube videos, his guides, and his stream, and I just thought, oh, this game looks great. He explains it so well. Yep. Uh, he was my go-to for how to get the quest done and stuff. Uh, before the Wikipedia, and uh, you know, and and he was my favorite stream to watch every yeah. year. When, you know, Twitch sends you who your top people are, and mm -hmm. Pestily's always number one. Uh, such I a good guy, guy, too. He's just such a yeah. genuine lad. You know, just yeah. just yeah. so good. So, yeah. so good. And then, and uh, so Pestily's got to be number one. Okay. Um, I, uh, and it, it's, if we're going to play, if we're going to play, i got to put in there, um, uh, let's put in Michael, M I C H E A L. M I M I C H L E A L. E A L. Oh, oh, oh. E A L. Okay. Yeah. And Michael? Michael is Pistoli's neighbor, and uh, he's terrible <laughs> at Tarkov, but I want him in there because he's so funny, so Hell wonderful. Hell yeah, and, shout uh, out Michael. <laughs> Let's go. Does he have a Twitter? Does he have something that I can... Uh, I can... He, he streams uh, Michael underscore okay. Risky. Okay. Uh, so uh, he, he streams these days as well. It's got shout a out stream, Michael. Let's go. He's, he's just... Part of the family. Um, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put in there Nixia. Okay. Uh, Great person. Because she is just amazing and really from the beginning of my um, streaming time she was super supportive super funny loved watching her she was my first ever raid when i i was i'd been streaming three weeks i had four viewers and she raided me with 40 and it just blew oh, my mind that's so and, awesome uh, she's such know, a good she, person she, too you have such a good list so far i don't know michael that well but I'm sure yeah. if he's Pestily's neighbor, he's a good dude. So any Australian Look, dude is a is a good comedy dude. Value. He's there for comedy value. Oh definitely. hell yeah. So yeah, yeah. So Pestily and Nixie are gonna be carrying. Michael's gonna be the <laughs> the the guy that makes everybody laugh. Okay. We got a good yeah, stack going. Uh I don't know who put next. Uh, let's put Gingy next. Okay. Love Gingy. One Such of the a best great type person of players too. out there. Yeah. And great person got to meet her in Vegas as well. And yeah. amazing. Um, and, uh, oh man, there's so many, it, it, trust me, so we many, can do, we yeah. can do a few honorable mentions if you want. I can, I can do that here. I have, I have the oh, space. Yeah. I left the space for it. So if you oh, want good, to, good, you good. can to, all right, we can do an honorable no, mention down here. <laughs> uh, well, I, I was going to say Sheaf GG is uh, oh, one he's, of the most wonderful he's a guys in time. good dude too. Yeah. And you yeah, got a lot so of good ones. Work. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. I was going to mention uh, Willers, oh, amazing guy too. Will. So many, yeah. But, yeah, it, we could go yeah. on and on. I'm sure know, there are so many good people. <laughs> there are so many good people. Shout out all of these people. Shout out Michael. Yeah, yeah. Again, you know, once again for being the the funny guy yeah. of the group. I need to know Michael oh, a yeah. little more. He sounds like a cool dude. He's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> well, you got your 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 stack. Let me go through it for the Correct. audio viewers one more time. Number one, we have Pestilli. Number two, we have Pestilli's neighbor, Michael. 
Um, three, we have Nixia, and four, we have Gingy, and then honorable mentions, we have Will and Sheaf, and then, like I, like you said, like I said, we could go on and on with this list, there are so many great content creators out there, especially people that, that, that we've met at, you know, Twitch cons, and, you know, different conventions, you know, Red Ops is up there for me as well, and stuff, yeah, yeah, there's yeah. so many great people out there, right, so, um, uh -huh. this is your, this is your dream stack right here. I mean, if good. we're, if we're in a tournament, um, Gingy will literally find everything known to man, including every key card. <laughs> um, in Pasilli, yeah. uh, he's just fucking nuts. And this, the, <laughs> this whole stack is great. Um, so yeah. I, I really appreciate you giving me your stack here. Um, this is the toast. I, I was saying this earlier. This is the toast rack stack. So... <laughs> There yes. we go. There we go. That's your stack. I'm going to end the stream here, uh, right here, and then we don't have to do that, and then we can pull your pull your screen back up, and then there we go. Thank you for giving right. us your stack, Mr. Toast Stack. Toast oh, Excellent. my God. I'm all over the place right now. It's um, Rack Stack. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to bring up content creation, um, and I'm sure you have a wild story on how it all started. You mentioned COVID earlier really being your um, the main prominent of why you tried streaming and stuff like that. Um, but how did you truly get into content creation? Uh, how did I get into content creation? Well, um, it's not my first career. Like uh, I was in, I was a TV editor uh, and a film editor for a long time. And I heard about streaming because I edited a feature length documentary about indie game development. Mm -hmm. And they interviewed a lot of streamers as well as cool. game de developers for that show. Mm -hmm. So I uh, actually... Uh, knew about streaming from editing that film. It was called Game Loading, Rise of the Indies. It's on Steam. It's on uh, iTunes, iMovie, or whatever. It's on all the um, it's on some of the movie purchasing platforms. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was made like 10 years ago. So I knew about streaming, and uh, I was playing Arma 3 Battle Royale at the time, and I knew some people were streaming that game. Mm -hmm. So often I'd get killed by... Uh, a streamer because they were also gods at the game and then when, once I got killed I'd jump into Twitch and uh, watch the rest of the raid congrats you know give them a GG in chat and uh, that's how I started um, interacting with Twitch and being part of Twitch but then uh, it was during COVID lockdown mm -hmm. uh, we all got sent home we uh, TV shows finished early and we we're all uh, locked down for four months and then Jeez. again uh, Later in the, that was in 2020, and then later in the year, locked down for another three months. We were not allowed to leave the house. We could leave the house uh, once a day for shopping and once a day for exercise. We could only go travel five kilometers from home, uh, three miles from home, yeah. had a radius, and uh, it was pretty severe. And uh, I was at home playing Tarkov, <laughs> and I just thought one day I'm going to try out streaming just to see what it's like because I was mm -hmm. watching streams and I thought. Oh, you have to be an extrovert to do that, don't you? <laughs> yeah. I, I couldn't do that, could I? Um, oh, this new graphics card from NVIDIA comes with GeForce Experience. You can stream with it. says <laughs> on the box you can stream just using the software that comes yeah. with it. It's like, I'm going to try it out. And I just fell in love with it. That's <laughs> it awesome. Crazy. And it's, it's been yeah. great ever since, it seems. You know, like you like you said earlier, you three weeks start, it started out, you had four viewers, Nixia rated you, and it's been uphill ever since, man. So yeah, it yeah. sounds that you've had a good good experience with content creation. And then what about like uh, other platforms, like uh, YouTube and stuff like that? When did you start getting into that sort of thing after you kind of started your Twitch stream? Yeah, pretty soon into it. Because I was an editor already, I already had all that uh, set up. Mm -hmm. So actually one week into streaming, uh, I did my first uh, Tarkov video. I did a guide for new players mm -hmm. um, for uh, for average players. Like there are heaps of guides done by great, great Tarkov players. And like <laughs> uh, I'd watched, uh, like Pesley had the raid series where he's mm -hmm. showing you how to play Tarkov. And it, the raid series that year, the first raid, uh, level one, he goes to customs, goes to dorms, kills Rishala and all the minions and gets all their gear. And yep. then that's what he takes into the next raid. And like at the end of that raid, he's like level four or five, right? <laughs> it's like, oh, great guide for new players. You know? <laughs> I'll just do that with my packer on and my uh, stock M4, you know, no problem, no problem. So I wanted to do a guide for, you know, people with my skill level mm -hmm. it's like okay go to customs hide in a bush wait till <laughs> everyone's gone yeah. then go get 
your quest items to level up your hideout and get out. You know, <laughs> that was my guide for the, new players. The so classic Tarkov player. No, one hundred percent. That's a great way to start. <laughs> That's awesome. That's so so cool. Um, although you still look thirty, the meat toast. I do know you're older <laughs> than most streamers. You know, no, no offense. You know, nothing, nothing against you or I'm whatsoever. Taking. Um, I did want to ask for you, though, you know, with somebody, you know, uh, being older than, you know, majority of streamers out there, was it scary to start or was it intimidating at all for you? Uh, yeah, I uh, I was nervous about my age when mm -hmm. I started streaming because all the people I was watching were at least 20 years younger than me, most of them 30. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I thought they, they're not gonna, they, they're just gonna laugh at me. They're not gonna watch. Mm. Uh, and, and actually my first couple of streams, I thought, oh, you gotta, you gotta look, you gotta, you gotta wear a baseball cap. All streamers wear baseball caps. I gotta wear a baseball mm. cap on stream. It's like, you should see my first stream layer. I'm trying on different hats, it's terrible. Um, but, but as soon as people started coming along, they're going, oh, this is amazing seeing someone. Oh, you're like, uh, you know, th this is really refreshing to mm. see someone your age enjoying gaming and playing and and playing you know tough games like this so um so chat let me know that it was fine to be old and gaming and they were fine with me uh and so uh, i was able to sort of just be myself and, awesome. and feel accepted and find a place yeah yeah that's that's it's so important to have that friend there you know it's so important yeah. to to feel comfortable yeah. in your own space you know it's but it's yeah, very important yeah. There is a bit of ageism now and then, every mm. now and then. Like, I often get featured on the homepage in Australia and New Zealand. Like, Twitch mm. have this thing where you can apply to get featured on the homepage. So, oh, I get yeah. a lot of randoms dropping by the stream when mm. I'm on the on Twitch.tv. You no, know, I'm just on the homepage of Twitch.tv. They click on, they see this old dude, and they're going, what is it? Who, who it? What are you doing, old man? Get get off the computer, you know? Yeah. <laughs> read, read a book, you know, get get out of here. And I like that bit of, and I get hit with a bit of ageism now yeah. and then. But these days, chat just, I just let chat pile in on them. I <laughs> <laughs> just, uh, yeah. I, I it out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that right is away. that sounds that is so relatable because I on uh, the opposite side of you know the system I'm very uh -huh, young uh -huh. looking right and I'll yeah, be honest yeah. I started when I was 19 and they told me to yeah. go to school or that yeah. I needed to go you know I needed to get my ass in class and stuff like that and chat would just beat them up I just let them fucking yeah, go yeah, at yeah. it you know like yeah. I'd be like hey guys can we keep it? Can we like keep it PG? And then you know, I see one of my main mods, and he's like banning him. I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna let that go through. You know, like I'm just, I'm not gonna, not gonna bring it up. It's, it's just gonna happen. You know, it's just, it, yeah, I get it yeah. too. You know, and, and I, I'm sure you know we can relate in that, in that aspect. Mm -hmm. Now I gotta ask, like, you know, you said you um let chat kind of deal with them, but do you got, do you ever like? I assume you don't take offense to it. Like that would be a really cool no, feeling. You know, like you know, yeah, yeah. Old man, get back to you know doing this or doing that. It's like, dude, I'm I'm fucking doing better than you on a video game. You know, like it's it's always a good feeling. I'm assuming. Look, uh, it, it, no, it hurts. It this does hurt sometimes. Like, because yeah. my reaction time is, you know, if I if I do a reaction time test, it's double what anyone else in chat mm. is, right? I, I know that. I and I adjust my play style accordingly. I have mm. to play more strategic because I'm not gonna win a, you know count turn uh, walk 10 paces turn around and shoot i'm not going to mm. win that ever um that that's why i'm no good in factory it's, it's basically mm. two people turn around a corner whoever's got the better reaction time wins and mm. that's not never me that's never me so i have to play tactical tactically and differently mm. but uh I like to call it relatable. I'm relatable, you know. Yeah, well, I <laughs> like, mean, you know, average level of skill. The but people with the, when streamer. People troll, <laughs> the people the streamer. People streamer. That's right. <laughs> that's right. But when people troll in chat, um, I, I, I have a, I, I try to give them a chance to read the room because a lot of uh, Twitch channels are pretty boisterous. There's mm -hmm. a lot of, you know friendly uh trolling and whatever yeah. else and name calling or whatever and you can people can come into the the room with that sort of energy and expect to you know have some banter and troll and and sledge and whatever mm. so um but my chat's not like that it's it's a slower pace it's more congenial it's more gentle it's more friendly and uh because that's just how i am so mm. i i try and give people a chance to read the room and i'll give them the read the room speech you know yeah. This is a different sort of place. I'll give you another chance. I'm not going to ban you for that. I'll just mm -hmm. delete your message and give you another chance. And and often they'll come around and say, mm -hmm. oh, thanks, man. This is, this is actually a really cool place. 
uh, they might double down, and then it's, easy. it's such an easy ban. And so, yeah. so it's, that decision is so easy. <laughs> yeah, I wish, I, wish yeah. I was I was like that. When I give people second chances and they still fuck it up, I'm just it makes me feel so bad. Like I don't know what it is. I can't do it. I let my mods just deal with them and they just like, you know, get this guy out of here. Like they they're already like, you know, have their pitchforks out ready to, you know, attack this dude and I'm over here like he's he's human, guys. He's human, you know, like he makes mistakes yeah, yeah. and and then yeah. he says something again and my mods are like, "Yep, get this guy out of here." And I'm over here like Damn, I kind of feel bad now, you know? Like, it's just <laughs> it's just how it is. Nah. It's just how it is with the uh, streaming career. No, no, no. no, it also makes it easy because if, if they double down, there's often a slur in there as well. Oh, yeah. Like, there's a service slur, so there's nothing more satisfying than following up a ban with a Twitch report, getting yes. them reported. They get, they get consequences. You get the email saying consequences yep. have been delivered. Thank you for your report. It's like, yes, we, <laughs> we, we made the world a better place yes. today. <laughs> yeah, 100%. Sometimes it's just a ch child that needs to learn, you know, and it's, it's, uh -huh, it's uh -huh. you know, yeah. nothing wrong with getting their Twitch account banned. I don't, I don't That's see an right. issue. <laughs> You know? Yeah, 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 um, exactly. When you first started streaming, Toast, did you mention it to family at, at all, like, you know, friends and <laughs> stuff like that? I, I'm curious. <laughs> I actually didn't. Uh, I was really shy about it, and I was sort of. I knew what their reaction would be, and I, I, I was actually pretty slow to tell um, the wider circle of friends. I was. It was a really long time before mm. I changed my um, job title on, you know, social media and stuff like that. Um, because what one was, I thought if this all this all could go away, and I'm going to go back. To my editing career or whatever or and so i don't want to burn any bridges i don't want to seem like a flake or whatever but it was actually playing games for a living telling telling boomers that you play games for a living is not easy and telling <laughs> my old work a lot of my friends are ex work colleagues they're still you know senior executives in it and or a film you know people or whatever mm. and that if i say i've gone and you know, quit my job and now I play games. I get I get paid to play games all day. They're like, what? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what are you you, 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 geek, you know, yeah. like yeah, get a real job, right? Like yeah, one hundred percent. So so I I actually had to had to wait till I really owned it and really mm -hmm. felt it in myself to be able to go post on Facebook or whatever to my you know high school high school friends or whatever. This is this is what I'm doing nowadays, and and you know the, it's a worthwhile job, and like I, I sort of had to justify it myself in that you know I'm I feel it's not just entertaining, it's mm -hmm. also being a role model and helping people out and creating a community for people, and uh, you know this is a worthwhile thing to be doing with my life, and once I got to that place, then it was uh, much easier to, to tell friends and family. But yeah. until then, I went to my I went to my High school reunion, my 40th high school reunion last year. Okay. Wow. So I'm seeing guys I haven't seen since the 30th high school mm -hmm. reunion or whatever. And I'm, I'm telling them about this job that they've never even heard of. They've never heard the word streamer. I, I, <laughs> I can, some of them have heard of YouTubers. That's about it. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, the, you know, you're trying to explain it uh, over and over again to the room of people. <laughs> You're going, what? You know, I work for the tax office. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a mailman. You know, what are you? I'm a streamer. Oh, yeah. I don't know what the fuck that is. You know, <laughs> that's, that's right, funny. That's right. but, and, the, and then the follow up is, oh, wait till I tell my kids. <laughs> I think this is I think this is hilarious. <laughs> yeah, well, like, yeah. that's the thing. I'm excited for the future because um, I have a, a sister and uh, my sister's husband is very uh, doubtful with streaming, but I can't wait. They just had a kid, and I can't wait until that little little guy grows up and he wants to play video games. I feel like I'm gonna be the oh, coolest yeah. uncle ever, you know? Yeah, like exactly. that's I just I'm yeah. so excited for it. But no, 100. Yeah. percent I mean, we're looked at differently, especially you know when we say it's our full time job. You know, people don't believe it. People don't you know they don't understand how could somebody watch you know somebody else play video games you know just play it yourself you know i've heard it mm -hmm. so many mm -hmm. times you know grandparents you know aunts whatever it may be i get it over here too you know so it's it's yeah. definitely a, yeah. definitely something that I've we uh, great, go through i've got a great i've worked out a great answer for that for mm -hmm. for boomers or, or just people who don't understand yeah. gaming culture uh it's uh, you you might play uh, 
you, you might be you might play tennis you mm -hmm. might enjoy playing tennis or golf uh and you you'll play and that's fun but you'll also watch uh t a tennis championship you'll watch yeah. wimbledon you'll watch the australian open on tv you might even pay to go see some of those people play live yeah it's exactly the same with computer games uh, it's just like sport that's a good and that's way, a great to, put way it. to explain to yeah. boomers because they understand um playing a sport and watching mm -hmm. a sport but they don't understand playing a game they don't understand playing a game yeah plus they can't imagine watching someone else playing a game yeah but it's it's just like it's just it's a sport that's it's a like that good way to put it i never i've always explained it live tv i always that's yeah. that's how i explain it but then they think i'm a reality tv show star and i'm the kardashians i'm like no i'm far from them but you know, uh, I you know I always say live TV, so that's a good explanation. Well, live TV is not bad, but uh, better. Uh, another one is um, talkback radio. Oh, okay, so talkback yeah, radio. yeah. Because so, a lot of boomers grew up listening to the radio, and they probably listened to you know Howard Stern or whatever. Mm. And some people, you can call in, you can be part of the conversation, and and part of the show is conversing with the listeners. So yeah. uh, ch talking to chat is a bit like talkback radio for boomers. Uh, so that's a good metaphor That's a metaphor good as way well. to explain it. I'm taking notes over here, Toast. I'm taking notes. <laughs> oh, man. Well, um, I wanted to bring up, I know you have a lot of friends in the field, you know, you, you know, pest silly, all, all, all that sort of thing, right? Um, how did you, how did like the joke with pest silly specifically come to be? <laughs> like pest silly's dad, how did that come to fruition? You know, I, I, I have to ask first and it, foremost. Totally. It's crazy because it came from chat and it came from the first week, I, first or second week I started streaming. Very early on, people would come in my chat and say, who is this? Hey, are you Pestily's dad? And like, they would sort of, <laughs> they made yeah. it up. But like, they asked me as like, well, they know about Pestily and they know about Tarkov and they know Australians play Tarkov. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why people started people started that idea that I was Pestily's dad, but it, it didn't come from me. It came from my chat. Yeah. And I'm guessing we have the same accent. We're in Australia. We're playing the same game. We have a couple of – we look similar enough for it yeah. to be funny. And uh, people and, – and, you know, that was enough. That was enough for it to become a thing. And luckily – he thought it was funny. Like yeah. that's the lucky part. Yeah. He's like, if he didn't think it was funny, then it would have just died there. But he actually leaned into it, and then uh, he he every wipe, Pestley was doing a, a one week subathon, mm -hmm. and then and he'd play for twenty four hours when the wipe happened. He'd sleep for four or six hours, mm -hmm. and then he'd do it again for a whole and as a whole thing. And while he's sleeping, he'd play uh, YouTube clips, mm -hmm. and. Uh, he came up with the idea uh, three years ago of instead of playing YouTube clips, uh, he would uh, fly out a streamer and in secret and get them to mm -hmm. uh, look after the stream. And uh, and so he contacted me and said, uh, that's the first time we ever talked was he said, he messaged me saying, uh, I've got an idea I want to run past you. You know, let's let's have a chat. I'm like, Pestily is messaging me. <laughs> Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm you know, back, back to me, you know. <laughs> he's like okay uh, um when the wipe happens i want to fly you know and so i flew to his place it's a, it's an hour's flight away uh, in a different state in australia and i flew out in secret uh and uh he streamed the wipe happened a couple of days later he streamed for 24 hours and then he mm. said i'm going to bed now uh, but uh, i'm getting my dad to look after the stream while oh. i sleep be nice That's to my perfect. dad and everyone went apeshit and uh the the legend was cemented that's so cool cemented. and you guys cement it well i should point out because i mentioned <laughs> it this morning i was like i we have an interview tonight with uh pesilli's dad and I, and i was like toast rack and i was like he's not actually his dad but they play it <laughs> off pretty well and there were like three dudes that were like wait they're not like related and i'm like you are <laughs> Like, you're making me question it, you know? Like, I was like, yeah, wait a minute. Yeah, yeah. Are they actually, you know? Like, but no, it's, you guys play well, it the, off really well. The way it panned out was so funny because for about a year after that, um, I always said I'm old enough to be Pestley's dad. I'm Pestley mm -hmm. Tarkov dad or whatever. I never said I was his actual dad, but I, I wouldn't deny it. Like, yeah. um, I, I sort of let it go. And, and what would happen was in, 
behind the scenes, people were saying, no, he's he's really his dad. He's actually his dad, <laughs> which is not yeah. true. But people, that sort of spread around for a year. Mm-hmm. So people would come by going, wait, I, I just heard you're really Pestily's dad. I, wow. I'd like, and I'd correct them and whatever. And they go, oh, okay. And then for the, the second year, the word got around. It's like, he's not actually his dad. It's, <laughs> you, not many people know this. It's, it's all made up. It's just a meme. And so yeah. now people come by the chat and go, well, I've, I've just heard, someone just told me that you're not actually Bessley dad. What, what's going on? It's like, this story is just going, going, and, and it, it generates itself now. It's going to come in a full loop here eventually, too. People yeah. are going to start believing it again, and then everybody's, like, freaking out, and then it's going to go back to the whole, like, are you not Pestilis? It's going to, you know how Twitch like chat is. At, you can look at my Instagram. There's a photo of me with Pestily, with Pestily's actual dad. <laughs> I've met his actual dad. He's a really nice guy. That's been on my Instagram yeah. feed for two or three years. <laughs> and still people are debating this. That's awesome. Well, it's good. It's good publicity, I guess. You know, it's good to have people oh, coming in and amazing. stuff like that, you no. know? It, it's amazing that he he thought it was funny. Now we're great mates. Mm. Uh, he's also an amazing mentor to uh, me and lots of yeah. other Aussie streamers and streamers around the world. Like he he really gives a lot back and helps people yeah. out. And and we have chats about stuff and um, you know business stuff. He's helped me out with knowing what to charge sponsorships and like all this mm. sort of stuff. Uh, he's he's really been an amazing awesome. mentor. He's kind of my Tarkov dad, but yeah. I'm his Tarkov. It's, it's yeah. you know, it's it's really amazing relationship. That's, He's a great guy. That's so so cool. When I talk to Pest, I tell you what, like I usually plan for an hour to two hours with these podcasts and. Pestilli, he's just such a charismatic person. You know, you know how Pestilli is. He loves talking, and it got the three hours, three and a half hours, and I'm like, holy shit! Like this has been the best conversation I have ever had with somebody. You know, yeah, he is yeah, such a yeah. good dude. He's in, in, it sounds to me that he's an even better friend to somebody like yourself. That's so, so awesome. <laughs> Which, speaking about friends, I wanted to ask you, um, who were some of your favorites meeting at uh, some of these conventions and people you've come really close to? Um, you know, I'm sure you've met a lot of people throughout the years. Um, who are some of your favorites that you've kind of got the know? Uh, because I started streaming during COVID, mm-hmm. all the conventions stopped over COVID. Yeah. So I've actually only been to one TwitchCon and two PAX, PAX Australia's mm-hmm. since uh, since COVID lockdown restrictions were lifted. Yeah. So I haven't been to that many, but going to TwitchCon in the US and meeting, like meeting Landmark. I mm-hmm. never thought I'd meet Landmark. Meeting uh, Dr. Lupo, mm-hmm. um, meeting Summit 1G, uh, the big, you know, especially when I started watching Twitch, these were the uh, names, or, or when I started playing Tarkov, mm-hmm. these were the big names. Never thought I'd get to hang out with the, the, those guys. So that was just like meeting royalty for yeah. me, and, and uh, that was fantastic. But then meeting people I'd had a lot of interaction with online mm-hmm. was so cool. So that's why meeting you is so exciting because we've interacted before and yeah. chatted before, and and uh, meeting people I played with online um, was was so cool uh, as well. And and everyone was there, and 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 we didn't know when we booked our t- uh, tickets to TwitchCon Vegas that. Mm-hmm. The BSG was even going to be there, mm-hmm. let alone have a booth and be able to play arena and all that. That was all a surprise. Yeah. Just a couple of weeks before the event. So it was amazing to have that focus. And then I never thought I'd live to see the day when I meet Nikita and yep. Dimitri and some of the other top BSG people. Mm-hmm. I didn't know they were even allowed to go to this US and, <laughs> yeah. you know, and could travel like that. And just being able to not only meet Nikita, uh, have have uh, dinner with Nikita and have long conversation uh, and all uh, all of that. That's just a dream come true. So I'm, I'm yeah. so happy for I, I'm having kind of a dad moment at the yeah. moment because uh, now that uh, Pestily is in uh, Rotterdam, mm-hmm. I, I know that he is now getting to meet Nikita for the first yep. time, and he's had such a long history yep. uh, of uh, uh, you know knowing Nikita and, and communicating with Nikita, but not. That's awesome. I'm so, just so happy for him that he's getting I to hang out. I didn't think about that. They, so they're meeting yeah. for the first time in Rotterdam. Yeah. That uh-huh. is that makes me proud of Pestily. You oh, know, yeah. I got to hug yeah. Nikita, right? And I, I can't believe yeah. I met him before Pestilli. Oh yeah, my God, that's yeah, so, yeah. so crazy. That's oh my so gosh, cool. that's that's that's, that's yeah. just awesome. I'm, I'm so excited for him. He deserves every bit of it, you know? Yeah. truly does. Yeah. Um, you, you, you're a very uh, po- happy and positive soul, Mr. Toast. 
Have you always been this way as a creator? I have to I have to ask. Have you always been this way? Like wholesome, yeah, I actually, positive? Yeah. Um, oh, well, I've always been uh, non-aggressive, mm -hmm. uh, but I, I've had, I've struggled with mental health through my life. Like um, mm -hmm. growing up and stuff, uh, I, I really struggled to find my way. I was super shy in school. Like first day of school, my brother would come home with three new friends. First, my first day of school, I wouldn't speak to a single person. Yeah. And not for the first week. You know, I was super shy. I was, I was the youngest. I was always the youngest in the class and always the smallest in my class. Uh, so there's a lot of bullying, a lot mm -hmm. of not knowing what to do, not, yeah. not being able to keep up socially. So, you know, I, I loved books and reading and later on computer games and stuff like that. But that wasn't available at that time. So I, I really struggled when I was young. Uh, to find my place and um, you know so so uh, finding streaming and finding uh, feels like finding my people like mm -hmm. finding gaming and finding streaming really feels like finding my people because we're all um, you know special and unusual in our own ways 100%. and I think people who choose gaming it's not your first option it's your yep. second or third option you know and then you find something you really love and connect with people so I think it's really um I find a real connection there, but uh, I, when I was young, I really struggled to mm -hmm. to make connections and stuff. So that's uh, such a good, good, good story. That's so wholesome, um, Toast. That's so wholesome yeah. because I I feel as though I kind of relate to that a little bit. I didn't have a lot of friends in high school, so mm. when streaming came around, right, I just was like, holy shit, I can have friends, you know? Yeah, like I, yeah. I I like even now I look at my look at my mods and I'm like, I I wish I was friends with you guys in high school. You know, like yeah. it's it's just such a it's it's so cool being a streamer. I'm so so grateful. You know, even though people do burn out of it and people do move on and you know different go different paths, it's so awesome being a creator. Yeah, you know, it yeah. really is. Yeah, and just even before I started streaming, just finding Twitch, finding mm -hmm. that com community, and being being part of that, and and having these, uh, you know. Um, friend you know it's parasocial yeah. but it's still uh, it still feels like finding your people and and yeah. uh yeah it's, it's it, i think it, it really meant a lot to me and still does that's so so awesome that's like i said so so wholesome mr toast so i'm glad that you <laughs> shared that with us i do want to move on i do want to go to one of everybody's favorite sections of the podcast it's called the throwback mm. section um i'm going to essentially you know throw it back a little bit and show you some things uh from the past now I will admit, you know, I with Pestilli, I was able to go back to 2010. Yourself, I wasn't go, able to go back as far, but I did find your first ever tweet. I'm going to stream it for you. I'm going to stream it for <laughs> chat, so I was able to find that. Let me take my camera away and then do all this uh, this thing again. There we go, and then go right here, and then we can we should be able to watch it. There we go. So I was able to find your first ever tweet. Um, I don't know if you can see this. You should be able to. Um, the September sixteenth, twenty twenty. Uh, two uh -huh. likes, by the way. And you said new account. Who dis? Uh, no more level uh, forty six. Starting a brand new Escape from Tarkov account today. Streaming live now on Twitch. Now, I think this is a wholesome, a very very wholesome tweet. But I think the the hilarious part to me is the the hashtags. Hashtag please follow is such a, <laughs> just a, such a wholesome tweet to me. Like that is That's that is great. so so that is just so funny to me um but no i found your first ever tweet you know this is That's actually amazing. this is actually probably a few months after i started streaming so this was not too long after i started as well so it kind of like we started around the same time yeah, so yeah yeah i don't know That's... i don't know if you had any um i don't i don't know if you had any um uh what, what, what's the word for it but i don't know if you started streaming before this and then made a twitter it was this like like first starting streaming right here or is this how did that come uh, about so it's september see, is, 16th yes. no, yeah my, my first stream was early september 2020 yeah. so okay. this is a week or two in okay and i've um yeah because i yeah so it's early on because i've got mm -hmm. toast rack tv i chose toast rack tv because it was available yeah on every plat social platform uh and made the accounts but i guess i hadn't tweeted yet so uh yeah th that's this is, awesome this is amazing <laughs> yeah so i found another one which is an older uh -huh. not a selfie but a picture with the boys i wanted to bring this one up for everybody um as you guys can see a bunch of handsome lads here you have pestilli in the middle train 
uh, some of these people, yourself, you know, yeah. I do know Red Ops right there. I don't know some of... Wait, that's... Um, oh, slush oh my. Puppy slush there. Puppy. Nick there Reynolds. you go. Uh, name them yeah. all for me. N name them all for me, Toast. That guy next to Pestilly. I don't know his name. Uh, to the right. Oh, that's, uh, so he's... Uh, that's uh, someone from Twitch. Yeah. Um, a, uh, um, and uh, then on the far left, yeah. there's Boomer, who used to be Pestilly's editor. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And, Okay. Behind, uh, then train, and behind yeah. train is uh, one of Red Ops mods. I've okay. forgotten his name, but he's a great guy. Yeah. Um. Yeah. And uh, and then next to Pestily on the right, who yeah. is that next to Pestily on the right? I'm not sure. Oh no, I, I wonder if I can. Oh, I can zoom in. Dang. But yeah, no, I think. Yeah. His Another face looks recognizable. Met, yeah. 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 I definitely I'll, okay. uh, I'll remember later but yeah and slush puppy and red ops yeah and meeting them was amazing and yeah. meeting train they, they were to me veteran tarkov mm. streamers and uh so this is at um dream hack isn't it so the first dream hack this is the first event i ever went to as a streamer mm. and i got to have dinner with pestily some of the twitch people and red ops and I, i'd met so i'd met pestily already yeah uh train red ops slush puppy That's i'd awesome. never met and uh it was it was wonderful to meet them and hang out with them yeah have dinner with them it was such a treat yeah, yeah this was back in september of 2022 so this is not that long ago but it it, it is a yeah. you know decent bit away it was that dream hack right and you got to Yes. Got, like you said, you got to meet a bunch of uh, great streamers. So that was, that's, yeah. that's got to be very cool for you. That's how I felt my first TwitchCon, you know, meeting and all these people I looked up to. Not only that, I also got to that event, Pestily. Mm. It, if that was the first DreamHack, um, I think that's the one where Pestily got to bring over uh, the Larder. So that's a, a oh. Russian truck yeah. that he had painted to look like uh, Killer's Helmet. And he yeah. brought that over from Adelaide to Melbourne, uh, like about an eight hour drive, uh, to, and had that showcased in the foyer of That's uh, so DreamHack. awesome. Yeah. And I got to do a signing. He had a signing mm -hmm. uh, for fans to come and uh, get an autograph. And he w graciously invited me, Train, Red Ops, and Slush Puppy to join him on That's the signing awesome. table. So I had my first ever signing. And yeah. the first person came up to me to get an autograph, and I was like, oh, crap. How does Toastrack sign his name? I don't have a signature. <laughs> yeah. I oh didn't thought this through at all. <laughs> oh, man, that's so awesome. I come up with a way of signing yeah. Toastrack uh, yeah. on the spot. It was so funny. <laughs> <laughs> if it makes you feel any better, signing Gino with three O's is incredibly hard and cursive. Uh, I was not taught cursive in high school, actually, or well, in yeah. schooling, nonetheless, right? Like they took yeah. out the the cursive writing um, state or class for me when I was in school, and then they added it back after I was out of school. So I kind of got, I I didn't know cursive. Somebody asked me to sign their sign their thing, and I, I'll be honest with you, I, I messed it up. But uh, moving yeah. on, I wanted to uh, show some older Twitch clips as well. They're not too old. But I did find some. This was six months ago. I thought this cool. was hey, hilarious. I saw, I saw a. Uh, I think it was in the comments. Is this cannibalism? And I thought it was hilarious because this clip is just hilarious to me. You are dressed up as a hot dog, and you are eating a hot dog. Uh, uh, hold on. Uh, let me let me actually real quick. Let me turn this. Real, yeah, there we go. Let me let me turn this up. There we go. But the, I Sorry, found I this hilarious. Like All right. <laughs> All right, look away, chat, if you're squeamish. It's so funny. Ah. How was it? Oh, it was so. <laughs> it was great. Easy. It was great. You think um, this is easy so I can't hear the sound, but uh, I'll just talk. Uh, but I remember the clip. <laughs> I, I, it was my partnerversary or something mm. like that. <laughs> and I went to the costume shop and said, do you have a toast costume? And, of course, I didn't have a toast costume. Yeah. So I said, okay. Anything bread or food related, yeah. what have you got? And they said, we've got a hot dog. I said, I'll take oh it. Oh, my I'll gosh. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so we, we, uh, I wore the hot dog on. Uh, so, of course, I had to eat hot dogs then. Yeah. And everyone's like, because I make Vegemite toast, you know, most mm -hmm. streams. Um, yeah. And everyone, every, someone always says it's cannibalism. I say, no, I'm a toast rack. <laughs> toast 
toast <laughs> racks eat toast every day. That's what they're for. That's they're awesome. They're the natural predator of toast. <laughs> so it's not cannibal, cannibalism, but that that maybe maybe that was. Yeah, that that might have been you know uh, pork on pork action. That's for sure. That might have been was, was, that might have uh, been. Toast, uh, yeah. That might have been against uh, the rules there, Mr. Toast. But I brought this one. This was three years ago. Um, oh, I wow. want to say that this was on Pest Silly Stream. I don't know, though. I'm sad that the audio is not coming through. Here we go. But you did a shoey. Yeah. And I have Cheers to ask. To you guys. What? That's not a shoe. Is that? That's not. That's got to be like a, a fake shoe, correct? Yes. That's a stubby holder, which you call a beer oh. koozie. So oh, it's, it's okay. a, a, a beer cooler yeah. uh, from the Grand Prix because um, the Australian uh, Formula One driver, I follow Formula One, mm. and uh, the Australian driver, Daniel Ricciardo, is famous for whenever he gets a podium finish, yeah. uh, he does a shoey, which is when you take off your shoe, yep. fill it with, in his case, champagne, and drink uh, yep. drink from the shoe uh, in celebration. And it sort of became a, uh, an Australian sporting meme mm -hmm. to do a shoey uh, if you have a victory. So uh, so he started selling merch, and that's a Daniel Ricciardo shoey shoe, like oh, shoe shoey yeah. koozie. Uh, so uh, I, I wasn't game to do a shoey from my actual shoe at that <laughs> stage. Yeah. Uh, but later uh, I, I uh, at at Pestily's house. This is at my house, I think. Mm -hmm. Although the Pestily logo there. Yeah, yeah I, I saw the Pestily logo. Thank I didn't know what that was about, yeah. but no, yeah. I th so I, I made, thought this is great. On my thank own you, stream, you. but I'm at Pestily's house. Yeah. So when I'm uh, there for the subathon, yeah. Yeah, there you go. I did a shoey once. I would like to point out in my actual shoe for my first shoey, it, uh -huh. it was not good. It was a very dirty shoe. Oh. I shouldn't have done it. No. Um, it was a bad mistake, but. I, at least I it was my did own. one with Pestily at the end yeah. of the subathon at his house, and uh, it was a spontaneous shoe. Awesome. Normally, I would rinse out the shoe beforehand. I'd choose my <laughs> newest shoe, you know, yeah. not that time. That was just the one I was wearing. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I didn't know that. Is that is that an Australian thing? You, you mentioned it was like something that F1 yeah. draft. Is, is shoey is an Australian thing. Okay. Uh, it, I, it, I don't know if it started in Australia, but yeah. Daniel Ricciardo made it mm -hmm. uh, quite a, a meme in Australia. So for a okay. while, a, any sporting person was doing shoeys for a while. Okay. So it kind of caught I on. I do remember but, now. I don't know where it oh, my God. <laughs> now thinking about it, back in 2018, 2019, I used to watch Counter Strike. And they, at the Australian events, uh, you know, what, what was one of I am Sydney. I think that's the big one that yeah. they have, right? I am Sydney yes. is a big yes. one that they have. Dream hacks are uh, are over there as well, but um, it, yeah. they did a lot of shoeies, and they would always, you yeah. know, showcase it, right? So now thinking about <laughs> it, I I'm just now thinking that that that's how that came to be, you know, and yeah. it's an Australian thing. That's awesome. Well, I'm glad yeah. that you were able to, you know, go through some <laughs> some throwbacks with me. I try to make it interesting every time. That's I'm gonna great. stop streaming that. I'm gonna bring up my camera again, then bring back this, and then do that again. Um, but before I move on from this uh, whole throwback section, I did want to ask um, one last throwback question, okay? So um, I, I'm very, very curious. Any games you wish you hopped on sooner? So for example, um, I wish I hopped on Tarkov sooner. Like I, I started sooner, but I wish I streamed it sooner. Are there any games that you wish you hopped on sooner, whether it be enjoyment or streaming wise? Any games you kind of wish you hopped on the train? Well, it's true about Tarkov. Like, I don't have the alpha armband. Um, yeah. I, don't, I wasn't there in the early days when it was just um, factory and customs or something like that. Mm. So, and I, so many stories of those days. So, I do miss that. Although, I just reset my spare account mm. and it gave me the alpha armband. So, there's a bug right now oh, where if you shit. reset your account, you get an alpha armband. So, that, there's a tip for you. <laughs> um, no matter whether you deserve it or not. Um, or at least I did. I don't know if you know, your, your, yeah. your mileage may vary. But um, I, I never, I never played Half Life at the time mm -hmm. when it came out. I only discovered it after Portal, yeah. which is a Half Life mod. Um, so uh, I wish I'd played Half Life back in the uh, at the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, the whole, but when I was younger, the whole Nintendo generation, I skipped that. I yeah. never played Mario, the original Mario's, or any of those, or Mario Kart, or any of that. So now, now that they're really popular as retro games. I'm no good at them, so mm -hmm. I wish I'd played uh, Mario and all that sort of stuff yeah. back in the day uh, when when it when it was first around. But for some reason, I I missed that generation. I guess I never had a Nintendo co console until the 
uh, 64. Yeah. And then I was all Goldeneye and, uh, and that sort of stuff. Yeah, well, it, I'm glad that you brought that up because I, I just now thinking about it, I think I might change my answer to Mario as well. Because mm. Super Smash Bros. Uh, is a game that everybody brings up that it was like the greatest gaming experience of their life. You know, playing it with mm. a sibling or a friend. I never got to experience that. And I think I'm mm. going to change my answer now. Because that's a that's, uh, that yeah. was a very, very good answer that you brought up. I think I'll definitely yeah. go with the Mario as well. I think that those are yeah. those are that that might be the greatest game of all time. You know, now thinking about it, Mario and those those sort of games were phenomenal, great games. Yeah. Um, yeah. which is awesome. It's we, you, us as gamers, we need those nostalgia games and those games that we hopped on sooner. You know, it makes it, the games that we hop on now so much more enjoyable. You know, in, in, why, in a sense, it's why retro music is such a big thing. It's like because the music that you listen to. When you are forming your identity, when mm -hmm. your teen years, your early twenties, yeah. that that's the music that really defines your life and stays with you all the way mm -hmm. through your life. And I, I I discover new music now, and I love it. But it's not like discovering an album when you're in high school. Yes, and you, you have that connection because mm -hmm. part of becomes part of your identity in a really deep way that stays with you. I and, never and really thought like that. about it that way. That's that, that you're you're a very wise man, Mr. Toast, cuz I, I never really thought about it that way. The games that we kind of grow up playing is what we always strive for but we will never find again, you know? Mm -hmm. Oh man. Mm -hmm. It's it's <laughs> it's sad, but it's it's a hard truth, you know? Uh moving on though, life and mental health. Um I just wanted to ask Toast uh, outside of streaming, how are you? How are you as a person? You know, before we get into some of the deep questions, I wanted to ask, how are you? How are you today? Yeah. I'm I'm good today. Okay. Uh, I'm 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 in a good patch. I've I've had ups and downs through my streaming career. Yeah. Uh, when when I started streaming, I was uh, with a partner. We we're uh, living together. Mm -hmm. We're no longer together. So oh. there was a, a relationship ended during the streaming mm -hmm. process. Uh, so that that was a, a, a rough road, but it was a mutual decision. We're still yeah. friends. We still talk uh, uh, once a week, and um, you know we. Uh, so we it was an amicable parting, yeah. but it still has been uh, a journey mm -hmm. to go from being partnered and discovering this whole new thing and starting a new career, yeah. uh, and then and then negotiating uh, moving apart and uh, physically moving it out and moving apart and all that sort of stuff. And um, that, so that's been, that has all the ups and downs that mm -hmm. it normally has. Yeah. Um, and um, stay, but staying, uh, staying with having streaming as not only a job, but a community has also been a really positive uh, yeah. element, something that's always there for you. Um, so that's been really good, but but it also has its ups and downs. Like the numbers go up and down, yes, especially right go... now. You see the yeah. numbers. I don't know as somebody late like yourself, wipe. but like late wipe, it's yeah. terrible. It happens late every wipe, wipe too. Really that's right. Yep. So uh, Tarkov, the audience, you know, go, grows tenfold at a wipe, and yep. then it slowly goes down again, and mm -hmm. then tenfold spike. That yep. that's a hard roller coaster to ride when it's when it's your livelihood. It really um, is. So, so that has its ups and downs as well, mm. and you know I'm I'm uh, guilty of you know looking at the numbers and going oh my subs are down um, yep. my career's over you know this is what am I going to do? <laughs> uh, I've thought you know. about this the past week, Toast. You were yeah. you were preaching to the choir yeah. right now. Oh Man, my and lord! Then a wife comes and you go you're over the moon. It's like yeah. oh this is amazing. Holy a hundred gifted me, subs! You know, you know? god <laughs> damn, where'd That's you come right. from? You know, like yeah. Oh, know, that's such a that's such try, a true feeling. And you know, being three years into it, four mm -hmm. years into it, uh, you still feel it. You know, you, yep. you know that it's just this is what happens, uh, and you shouldn't it shouldn't bother you. Uh, it's just the cycle of yep. business, you know. Uh, but it's still, you know, because it still it's bothers you. you. Yep. Yeah, it still yeah, bothers yeah. me. Yeah. I promise you. Like I, I think about backup options all the time when late white pips. Yeah. I'm like, damn, yeah. should I really go back to college right now? You know, like, uh -huh. should uh -huh. I just wait yeah. this out? I've talked to my yeah. therapist about it. She's like, don't make any rash decisions. I'm like, well, I th I'm thinking about it. You know, like, <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it, it's, no, totally. it happens late wipe. It really does. It does. So I really try and learn. So um, uh, I, I really try and learn how to be more resilient emotionally um, in, in streaming. And um, it, I really now 
uh, I, and I listen when when somebody leaves streaming and does uh, yeah. and, t and talks about it. I really try and listen. Like Endra, shout out to Endra who did an amazing uh, YouTube video when she quit full time streaming mm -hmm. a few months ago. Uh, she did a great video about what it does to you. And uh, I, I knew the risks about streaming, but she articulated it so well. I learned yes. that um, having uh, streaming is a parasocial relationship where it's it mm -hmm. you feel loved by the community, mm -hmm. and you are loved by the community, but it's not actual. It's not person to person yeah. love, but it it pushes a lot of the same buttons in your in your psyche. So it it makes you feel loved, but it but it also takes up all of your social energy yep. budget. Uh, so after you finish stream, you sort of got no social energy left for your IRL relationships. And if you don't watch out, they can suffer. You yep. can see friends less often. You can see family less often. You spend less time with your partner. Uh, and those relationships can really suffer. And that can impact you. Uh, and then if the numbers drop or you stop streaming, then you've got nothing. You've, you've mm. burned... Like streaming sort of, if you if unchecked, streaming will burn your social bridges and you don't mm. even know it. You, it just slowly happens. So I really pay attention to those lessons and, um, and, and make myself keep my other uh, IRL social relationships going. So I'll make myself uh, call friends and arrange to have dinner or a beer or a coffee. Uh, make sure I... I keep seeing family and doing family stuff and and uh, seeing family members and visiting family members yeah. like some of them are interstate or overseas keep those relationships going don't uh, let them go just because uh, just because streaming is feeding your social needs yeah don't let the other ones uh, fall away uh, that that road leads uh, to disaster. Yep, it's. I know exactly what you're talking about. I'm so glad that you brought it up because it's literally my next question. I, I wanted to go back to the whole family slash friends streaming thing. Do you think you mm. balance your life well, Toast? And I, I ask this to every creator and they always give me a, a different yeah. response. So I want to ask you, do you feel like you balance your yeah. life well? Friendship, streaming, work, life balance, all that sort of thing? Uh, I'd say it's a work in progress. <laughs> it's a work in progress. <laughs> always is. Uh, yeah, streaming wants to be your 24-7. Yep. Uh, and I, I see creators who are more successful than me, and I go, why don't I have those numbers? Mm. I want those numbers. What do I have to do? Oh, they're, they're streaming for more hours than me. Plus, once they finish streaming, then they're editing videos mm. or, or talking to their editors and, and pulling out clips and doing social media and doing all this. Other. It's like they're working twice as hard as me. It's like... Oh, I'm okay. I'm good. I'm good the size I am. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. You know, I try and do. I like. I try. I keep trying to do grow YouTube and mm -hmm. um and do YouTube content. I keep starting series on YouTube, and then I just get so exhausted from it that I trail off. Like I've started hardcore series twice and got up to episode six or seven and gone. Oh, I cannot do this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it's killing me. Um, and, uh, you know, so, um, I, I, I'm trying to moderate my time with, um, streaming, but it's, it's a, it's a time intensive job and, uh, and I'm putting, I'm uh, putting effort into, uh, investing in, uh, you know, uh, meaningful IRL relationships and, uh, friendships and family and, and, uh, it's, it, it's improving. Yeah. 100%. And I mean, it, it, it's like, I, like you said, you know, even at my young age, you know, at, at other people's ages, right? Like it's literally all of just a, a pr progress of balancing your life. Well, you know, you gotta, you gotta work on it. It, it does not matter what age I've heard. You know, my grandparents mentioned their work-life balance isn't necessarily the greatest. You know, my parents, right? Like, their work-life, it's always a process. And I'm so glad that you brought up the fact of, you know, um, the conversation where you said uh, uh, where you the, the work-life balance is always kind of being... I, I forget specifically what you, what you mentioned, but the whole, like, the Raid series, so uh, episode six, right? Yeah. Subathons for me. I, mm. I've never done a subathon. I think mm. I would burn out. I really do. Yeah. Like, I can't, like, I go to the gym every day. I go outside for four or five hours a day to, you know, touch grass or, you know, 
uh, go on, you know, go for a walk or a run or read or whatever it may be. I don't think a subathon would work for me because I would be so genuinely like, it, it, I would just be so burnt out, you know? And I'm so glad that you brought that up is like, we, we also are humans, you know, and people don't realize that with content creation is that we aren't robots, you know, we, we, we don't go beep boop bop, you know, we, we, we genuinely have feelings, right? And, and it's very human for us to burn out of one thing or, you know, get to episode six and be like, I can't do this anymore. You know, it's a very human thing. And, uh, there's a lot of people out there, you know, the streamers and such that, you know, play the robot role well, but you know, it's, uh, we're human at the end of the day. So I'm very, very glad that you brought that up. Which, speaking about, um, like, human and stuff, you you mentioned that you struggle with balance, and we all do. Um, if you were to give any advice to people that is struggling with their work-life balance or their relationship balance, what would it be? Is there any advice that you have? Um, well, um, the first thing is, don't beat yourself up about this. Uh, mm -hmm. Everyone struggles with this. Uh, yeah. So don't go into a shame spiral about it. This is something that we all struggle with. Uh, in Western culture, um, you know, we're all trying to climb that mountain to success. Mm. Uh, and that's something we grow up with. Um, uh, and, uh, but yeah, I, I guess um, you, don't, you don't need to be the number one to be uh, successful, I yeah. think. Um, and, uh, it, but yeah, it, it's, it's hard not to be glib, but it's, yeah. uh, it's, uh, so, so I think, um, and, and talk about it. I think talking about it is helpful yes. as well. Therapy, uh, because ver you know, verbalizing things. Yeah, I'm a big believer in therapy. Yeah. Uh, I've, I've uh, got a lot of a uh, lot more happiness and and yeah. contentment in my life um, thanks to therapy and Love realizing it. where these patterns come from, uh, because that gives you power over them and 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 calms the, the those those parts that mm -hmm. that uh, demand irrationally demand things from mm -hmm. you. Um, and make you behave uh, in uh, in <laughs> crazy ways. Yeah. Um, but uh, yes. Yeah, so I think uh, it's a process and a journey. But yeah. uh, but talking about it is really helpful. And and talking to so having opportunities uh, to support each other. So mm -hmm. if if you are in content creation, being able to talk to other content creators, reaching out and making those relationships, yes. and and doing coffees like that's why going to conventions if you can like. Uh, you know, being away from a stream is scary. Yep. Uh, it's expensive, all of that sort of stuff. But it is really helpful to be in a room of other people who do uh, the same thing you do. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just just being with people who get it uh, yep. and go, yeah, I know. Yeah, me too. And, and all of that is, is so valuable. It's really uh, valuable. It, um, it makes you feel uh, human. Going to the conventions yeah. and stuff, it makes you feel grounded in a sense. You know, yeah. being yeah. surrounded by people that you you know have received compliments from or you look up to right and it's like mm. holy shit like this is real life you know like it, when we're online chronically online whatever it may be it's hard sometimes you know so yeah. uh exactly yeah. it's just you know one day at a time and you know surrounding yourself with like-minded people 100 percent. you know mm. it's 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 yeah. great advice mr toes great advice um now i wanted to mention uh you've done some pretty crazy stuff on stream you know, you, for example, dress up as a hot dog and ate a hot dog. Um, what's some crazy <laughs> stuff you've done off stream, though? I'm sure you have a bunch of stories. Is there any crazy <laughs> ones that you can share? You know? Uh, let's see. So uh, I, I forgot. Uh, I, I didn't have a chance to think of some answers to this. I mean, uh, crazy stuff off stream. Like skydiving? Um, have you ever yeah, skydived? I'm not. I'm not into the risk taking. I think okay. crossing the road is dangerous enough for me. I think uh, that, that's, <laughs> that's a fair answer. Swimming in the ocean in Australia—that's that's yeah. all the danger I need. You know, <laughs> uh, I do not need to jump off something. Yeah, <laughs> where where I'm being strapped in by you know a 17 year old yeah. uh, backpacker from England <laughs> on, on doing a vacation job. Yeah. I do not want to put my life in their hands. I'm not going to do skydiving. I'm not going to do bungee jumping. Also, I have uh, vertical. Like I don't. I don't like heights. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Okay. So I feel like I'm bungee jumping just when I'm at the top of a building. You know. Yeah. I, I get that thrill for free. You know. Yeah. Um. But uh, yeah, I, I mentioned um, uh, the coffee in in Uganda. That trip <laughs> uh, when I was 21, uh, traveling in wow. East Africa and Eastern Europe. Uh, at that age, at that time, this is pre-internet in the mid-80s, 
that that was that was some pretty wild stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. We traveled. We flew. We wanted. Uh, I, my girlfriend and I wanted an experience of culture shock, so we flew straight from Melbourne, Australia, to Cairo, Egypt. Oh, and that's so cool! Woke up in a hotel overlooking the main square in town, Tahrir Square, and it was just absolute chaos and bedlam <laughs> and foreign languages and foreign smells and and uh, it was it was a crazy time. And then when we were there, we bought bought a, a flight down to Kenya. Uh, and tra and then backpacked through Kenya, Tanzania, yeah. uh, Uganda, and and so yeah. And uh, um, at one stage, uh, we um, uh, I had to cross. I we got separated because mm. my girlfriend caught malaria, and, oh my, my God. and she needed to be hospitalized with malaria. Jeez. It was that bad, yeah, which was terrifying. And she she um, needed to be flown to a hospital. We got a flight. On a missionary flight because the the airport in town was out of fuel uh they hadn't had fuel for weeks and we had to wait till the plane came with enough fuel to keep going oh so gosh. she got a flight to nairobi and got to hospital and i had to go overland by myself i had to cross borders by myself as a 20 year old white male across <laughs> yeah. um, from uh democratic uh, republic of congo which is yeah. called zaire then into uganda at a remote border station they had a special book for um, when uh, foreign people crossed the border, mm -hmm. like from outside Africa. And the previous one was years before. And they yeah. searched ev every bag and everything. And it was a terrifying experience. There's like 16 year olds with machine guns and all this Jeez. sort of stuff. Yeah. Uh, finally got away from those guys and set off to the bus station to get mm -hmm. the next bus. And then they came driving after me uh, in a truck saying uh wazungu wazungu white white man white man come here come here get in the car get in the car i was like what is happening here this is the most terrifying moment there's these yeah. army guys with guns telling me to get in the car and, and i i get in the car i have no choice yeah and they say you you'll be bitten by lions you'll be bitten by lions <laughs> i took a wrong turn and yeah. i was walking into the national park oh where they gosh. had three climbing lions uh just in the Jeez. whole part it was, a res it was a lion reserve and i was just walking uh, down the road yeah. because i took the wrong turn it's like they rescued me from being eaten that is that is a crazy story toast that is a 100 percent a crazy story wow yeah. okay so there i just there's a lot of story to unfold here i'm just trying to think about it all so you you had Two evils. I thought the danger you know? was. The, I thought the danger was the border guys. Yeah, they were not only fine; yeah. they actually rescued me from the actual <laughs> danger. I see why they had guns. You know what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, fucking lions. Oh, that's uh -huh. so awesome. So you had two evils that trip. You had unfortunate case of malaria, or well, your 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 uh -huh. girlfriend, and then yeah. you had the lions that almost ate you. That's that's crazy. You uh -huh. had a, you had quite uh -huh. the trip, I guess. Oh, Man. that's that's yeah. so so awesome. And well, that's a that's a crazy thing you've definitely done off stream. Um, let's look, talk a little bit about Australia. You know, you just talked about some dangerous things, but Australia also has some dangerous things. You know, uh, scorpions and and kangaroos and scary shit. Um, any crazy stories in regards to Australia? You know, any anything that like, look, for example, you guys in Australia got them damn big ass spiders. Uh -huh, if I saw uh -huh. one of them on my wall or on my floor or whatever it may be, I might actually pass out. Right, like it, they they scare me. Right, are there anything yeah. that like yeah. is there anything you know that you've done or Australians in particular that aren't phased whatsoever that us Americans would probably pass out at or any crazy yeah, stories think, that you have? If if you have a huntsman living in your house, mm -hmm. that's a good thing. You you are friends with the huntsman. <laughs> Huntsmen don't make webs; yeah. they hunt other insects. So they. They kill mosquitoes. They kill oh. the uh, dangerous spiders. Yeah. They they are non poisonous. Uh, they they're your friends. If you've got a huntsman in the house, you you just take care of it. Yeah. You keep an eye out for it. You uh, it's fine. If it's okay. in the bedroom, you might freak out and move it to mm -hmm. another room or take it outside. You won't kill it. Uh, but generally, if you have a huntsman, they they're the big they're the bigger yeah. ones. Yeah, I've heard of them. Yeah, benign and, and non poisonous, and and they're absolutely fine. 
Um, but uh, yeah, you do grow up um, knowing uh, what to look out for, mm -hmm. what spiders are poisonous ones to watch out for, and what which ones are fine. And and you do grow up with knowing how to deal with snakes, mm -hmm. keeping an eye out for snakes. If you are hiking, um, you know to make a lot of noise, uh, especially if it's sunny. If it's cold and sunny. Uh, you'll you'll see a few snakes there. Some of them are poisonous, some of them aren't. Either way, you treat them all with caution and give them a wide berth. Mm -hmm. But you just learn to live with them. Yeah. Um, it's it, it's uh, generally, but it's it's only when you're hiking or uh, out of the city that that, that you know you, mm -hmm. you you're going to see anything dangerous. It's, it's a bit of a meme that people you know people in my chat always say, oh, "I'd love to come to Australia, but I'm terrified of X." Uh, there's no way I'm coming. It's like, well, you know, you, 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 when I go to the States, it's like saying, oh, I'm not, I, I'm not going to go uh, to New York because I'm scared of bears. Yeah. It's like, well, you know. There um, ain't a lot of bears in, in, in no, the city. You, know, you have to go finding, you know, yeah. um, like US has way more deadly creatures like bears. Yeah. Humans. Uh, coyotes, you know? yeah, um, humans. mountain lions, humans. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're and, pretty uh, scary ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. You have ticks. You're going to get Lyme disease yep. if you go hiking. I have you that. know, all this stuff. Yep. It's like, you know, it's, it's like, it doesn't stop you. You just yeah. learn. It's just. What what's scary to you is is we have different dangerous animals mm. from yours, and, and yeah. so that's that's a bit of a learning curve. But it, it's not a it's not something you know. Like um, one person dies of a shark attack every two years in Australia. Really? Whereas a thousand people a year die crossing the road. You know, yeah. like it's not a big deal, but it is a thing that you uh, learn to be cautious about. Yeah. Know? But it doesn't stop you. That's doing a, anything i didn't know that one or one every two years uh-huh yeah. wow yeah. i feel like that's oh, probably man. more in the states to be honest i know uh, the atlantic ocean is known especially nowadays it's there's a lot of shark yeah. shark attacks in florida right now uh, right. Um, yeah. immense yeah. amount right there's right. a lot of them going on so yeah i mean that's right. a good yeah. way to put yeah. it right like it, everybody lives uh, in danger it's just you got to learn how to deal with the danger so that's definitely a yeah it's definitely a way to yeah. look at it. Um, which yeah. speaking about it, you you're also an incredibly positive person, Toast. Um, how did this come about, and how have you been? How, have you always been this way, like positive, uh, wholesome? Have you always been this way, even when you were 21 and facing lions and stuff? <laughs> I've always been glass half full. Uh, yeah. I think it was a coping strategy from growing up. Mm -hmm. I always I, I grew up um, with a lot of unhappiness, but I I always knew. This is not how it should be. Mm. And I always had the idea that there's a future where things were going to be better. Mm. And I don't know where I got that from. Uh, and it, if you don't have that, I don't know how to cultivate it because I've always had it. Mm. Um, but I've always, um, I, I think uh, one of my survival strategies was imagining a, a different world. Mm. So fantasy, games, yeah. Um, books movies tv all these things and music were all huge to me uh growing up because uh they spoke to me of um this better world and mm -hmm. and and i've always sought that and and uh and and tried to try to move in that direction so it's it's always so that seeing seeing a better future has has just been part of my uh, part of me my whole life and I, I see it as being a survival strategy uh, yeah. and and sometimes it gets me in trouble uh, so mm -hmm. you can you can you can think there's going to be a positive outcome in a relationship that never is going to yeah and you can stay in a in a bad in a harmful relationship too long um, by being by being too optimistic by thinking yep. oh this is going to get better one day. Yep. They're trying, you know, this is, this one's, this time's the last time mm -hmm. uh, this thing's going to happen. Uh, and then it's going to be smooth sailing. And you can convince yourself of things that are never going to get better and stay mm -hmm. way too long in a, in a tough, in a, in a, in a harmful situation. So it has got me in trouble occasionally, but, mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's generally been a, a plus. Yeah, and you'll never feel bad for being a bad, a good person. You know, I, I think that's a, that's what my mom always taught me, right? Is like, I, mm. I, I look at myself as a very wholesome person or I try to be, you know, sometimes a very down the earth person, right? And she always told me, you know, you'll never feel bad for doing good things, you know? And I, yeah. I've always lived that way. And 
You know, it sounds to me that you kind of live the exact same way, you know? And assuming yeah. how positive you are on stream, I, I wanted to ask, you know, I'm sure you're a big advocate for mental health. Have you ever struggled with any mental health related things? I know you mentioned uh, a relationship yeah. loss, unfortunately. Um, and any mm -hmm. advice for anyone that might be struggling, you know, mental health uh, related? Yeah, I, I definitely have had uh, difficult times, especially when I was younger mm -hmm. in my teens and 20s. Uh, and it was only once I started hitting around 30 or so that I started to accept who I was and not mm -hmm. spend all my energy trying to be something else for somebody else. Yeah. Uh, I, and looking back on that time, I spent so much energy um, uh, uh, worrying about what other, other people thought and mm. doing and, and trying to fit in and trying to do things uh, to please them rather than me. And um, you know, that was the, the big learning that sort of came from starting to do therapy and, yeah. and but also just just from getting older you just suddenly start being a bit more comfortable in your own skin and mm -hmm. going you know what i'm not going to pretend to like that anymore yeah. and if that loses me a couple of friends then that's okay that's probably a good thing that's probably my life will be better without trying to be everything to everyone um so i, I for me therapy was really helpful i yeah. think it's not for everyone it's not affordable for everyone, mm -hmm. uh, although there are uh, ways to get financial support for that sort of stuff these days. But um, and it involves um, taking it involves removing the bandages from the wound and re-exposing yeah. the wound. And that's that's things get worse before they get better when you do that. You yeah. see, it hurts more uh, to get you know the wound yeah. cauterized or you know. Get the surgery done and then you can recover you That's know such the, a good so way of looking at it yeah so people some people just don't want to do that don't want to mm. go there and, and and they'll work out other ways of of, of making their way in life and mm. i think that's okay um, but for me i really got into like my dad's a scientist my mom's a librarian i re i want to know stuff i yeah. want to learn more about stuff and i got really into i started off i've read i think i've read a book about dreams and i started keeping a dream diary oh. uh, and if you start keeping a dream diary like a notebook beside mm. you in bed you can write down what you just dreamed as you're waking up you start dreaming more as well because your dreams really? go oh, someone's listening you know yeah. and you start remembering them better and i and i started and that was my entree before i discovered therapy i discovered you know writing my dreams down thinking about my dreams and this book had interpretations for dreams that were totally made up and totally rubbish yeah but it was a, it, that was my entry point and then i um discovered um therapy and and started and and i'd bring my dreams to therapy and we'd talk about them and uh and 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 that was my launching point for sort of digging into how things work uh behind the scenes because That's so cool yeah. Our brain's made up of so many different systems, but they're separate from each other. The, the way I understand it is we, we mostly live in the West in, in our verbal part of our brain where the talking part mm -hmm. and the talking part thinks it's the whole brain, but it's just the language part. It's just this little section. There's yeah. this whole other parts of the brain that are nonverbal that are just as important and just have just as much say, if not more say in what you do and but the, the verbal part thinks it's pulling all the strings and we call the rest the unconscious. It's not it's not unconscious, it's just nonverbal. Yeah. Um, so you start you know, you want to know there's all this other stuff going on in there. And I just thought it was fascinating to to do a bit of a deep dive on that and, and see where these things come from. It's like, oh, this this behavior, this comes from when I was this age and I it was a survival strategy yeah. for this situation, but I'm not in that situation anymore. Mm -hmm. I don't need to do that anymore. But why am I compelled to keep doing it? It's like I don't know. Let's work on that. Yeah, you know, take off the bandages, it, like you said. You kind of yeah. you gotta have to you you gotta take off the bandage to be able to do surgery, like you said. It's yeah. Oh, yeah, that's such yeah. a that's such a good way to put it. And I think it's I think it's really cool that you also have realized this, right? Like especially you know learning it. I feel like sometimes I've learned this at a very young age. Is that you know ther with therapy and stuff and fixing my patterns. It starts by you know like you said, it gets worse before it gets better. You know, mm -hmm. and it's 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 such a good point that you brought up, and I think a lot of people you know need to hear something like that. You know, and it's it's one of the reasons that a lot of people watch you is you're very down to earth as well. You know, you're a very positive person, but you also 
share you know your knowledge with other people and, and what you've learned and stuff like that so you know especially like you brought up a while ago you know like you didn't want to make a guide for you know the the best Tarkov player ever you wanted to make a guide for the the casual players and i'm sure a lot of people appreciate that too so i appreciate what you did what you're doing and you sharing your lot your knowledge man and i i hope you know you should be proud of yourself for that um now going back to the whole like pest silly thing you know with you being the dad of pest silly um, I'm sure there are people in chat that all that look at you though as an actual father figure. You know, people will come to you for advice and stuff. Do you feel yeah. like uh, that that's a thing? And do you like feel the same that you know chat kind of looks at you as a father figure to some people? That was initially that was actually a surprise to me, and mm -hmm. I wasn't expecting it. But it totally made sense because yeah. I'm you know 20 or 30 years older than yeah. the people, a lot of the people there. Um, I, I, I also get uh, people similar age and stuff like that, but uh, people started calling me dad in chat very early on <laughs> yeah. uh, and asking me dad advice and saying, you know, I've got this relationship issue going yeah. on. What do you think? I've got this job opportunity, but I have to move state. What do you think? It's like mm. they're asking me dad advice, you know, life advice. It's like I, I'm just giving off this energy and, and, and I'm down for it as well because I like thinking about these things myself. Uh, and uh, I sort of came to the realization that um, people, these people are talking to me like I have wisdom or know what I'm talking about. It's like I I, I don't know any more than anyone else, but I but I'm 58, so I've had this many years of experience with stuff. Uh, mm. So I can I can say you know in a lot of life situations I can say I've been in a similar situation like to that, or I, I've been in you know this other situation which maybe and. So I'm able to say, well, I'm no professional. I don't give financial advice. I don't give mental health advice. You know, mm. I'm not a therapist, but I can say, well, I was in a similar situation once. Yeah. Here's what I did and here's what I learned from it. You know, mm. Here's what went well. Here's what didn't go well. Here's what I learned from it. Uh, and I hope that helps. And I'll open it up to chat and say, hey, what in chat? Have you had a similar situation? What did you What did you do? What did you uh, think? And and often the best ideas come from chat rather than yeah. from me. It's just, uh, I'm I'm just uh, you know um, having uh, having the conversation uh, with everyone else. Um, so it, it it came about organically mm -hmm. um, just from the energy I found I had and. And, and the fact that I'm up for those sorts of discussions. Yeah. Um, so it, it happened spontaneously, but I, I really leaned into it. And now I feel it uh, as um, a really big reason I continue to be a streamer is because mm -hmm. it feels real. It feels meaningful. It feels, uh, you know, when those, those things only come up for a few minutes each stream. Yeah. But they are real moments that I remember mm -hmm. uh, of uh, this is a real thing going on in someone's life. And... I hope I've helped and, you know, often I think people, um, like, why do people bring up personal stuff in, mm -hmm. in, in Twitch chat? I think it's because that it's a online community where they, they feel, uh, you know, people, I, when I'm on Twitch, I feel like I'm with my people. These are yeah. people that get me. They're also into Tarkov. They're also into gaming. They get that we have this thing in common. Mm -hmm. I think I can share this. And also it's, it's somewhat anonymous. Uh, mm. So it's sort of safe. Uh, I can bring up this difficult topic in my life. I, I, I feel like some people bring up topics for the first time mm. in chat before they bring it up with their family or their friends or their partner because they're testing the waters. They're, they're at the early stage of processing something that's going on for them. And they'll say, say something in chat about, now I've got this difficult situation going. Mm -hmm. And it might be their first time verbalizing uh, what's going on for them. And so I want that to be a positive experience. And then I say, this is great. You know, good on you for bringing up a sensitive topic, mm -hmm. you know, with, with strangers. Good on you. Do, keep doing this. Do Bring it up with a trusted friend. Bring it up mm -hmm. with a trusted family member. Uh, if if appropriate, go, you know, maybe even look for a professional or call, mm -hmm. call the number um, and, you know, keep going with it. So, you know, I, I think, think it's really... I think that's big, great big. advice. And I think uh, one thing you kind of mentioned is that you never necessarily give advice based on, like, you know, you're not a therapist, right? You're a streamer. But the truth is a lot of people find great advice from being able to relate to somebody. 
You know, going mm-hmm. into, you know, let's say you're going through a breakup and you go in the, you know, your chat or Pesely's chat or somebody else's chat and you're like, hey, dealing with this breakup situation. And then somebody's like, oh, well, I went through this as well. You know, like this is what I did and this is how I got through it. And, you know, maybe you can take some advice from it. You know, that I feel like that's some of the best advice is from somebody yeah. who knows what, you know, knows what's going on and what they did. Right. And it's just. Yeah. Yeah. It's part of the process, yeah. right? So, I'm I'm yeah. very very glad that you brought that up. Um, I did want to bring mm. up the future of Toast Rack. So this mm. is one of my favorite subjects as well. Um, the future of Toast Rack, Toast Rack is what I'm gonna call it. Any big yeah. uh, things coming up? We are about to get into the speed questions and chat questions. So chat, mm. feel free to have a, a few questions ready to go. I don't want to take uh, Mr. Toast here too long because I know it's Sunday, you know, going out and stuff, uh, you know, good breakfast and family time and all that sort of thing. <laughs> but uh, I want to ask about the future of Toast Track. Anything big coming up that you're, uh, you're excited for, you know, plan on branching out to other games, upcoming projects, anything you'd like to share? Um, I, I don't spend a lot of time thinking about the future. I don't have mm-hmm. a five year plan. I don't have a 10 right. year plan. I'm sort of a, see how things go and travel, but, uh, I'm really enjoying the journey of streaming. I feel like it's uncharted territory for my life plan mm-hmm. and it's an unexpected direction that is continues to surprise and delight me. Um, so I, I think um, I, I'm seeing where it takes me, mm-hmm. and I'm I'm curious to see. I, I I sort of want to approach it creatively. I think a big part of streaming is being genuine and being real, and mm-hmm. uh, actually having fun, not just mm-hmm. pretending to have fun. But I think that's what it sets streaming apart: is that you're getting the real person and you're encountering the real person. So it's part of your job is to keep it fun for yourself and and see where that takes you uh, and try and keep things interesting for yourself because otherwise it can get repetitive it can feel like a job it can feel like a chore yeah. and you don't want that and and it's no it's no it's the content's not good when that happens so you got to keep surprising yourself mm. and I'm always looking for that uh, next thing to to keep everything fresh mm. so um, uh, and uh, the way and I, I didn't think I'd be streaming as long as I have, but <laughs> yeah. I'm still having fun, mm-hmm. and I want to and I want to keep adding to that. So I'm always thinking, what what's going to make it more fun? I, yeah. I like um, I think more collaborating uh, mm-hmm. is uh, is something I, I want to do more of, uh, and continue to um, travel uh, and do do uh, events and things like that. I want to do more and more of that, mm. uh, and then uh, I'm also starting to think, well, what's after Tarkov? Like at some stage. Um, t- I'll want to move on to something else. That seems to be a big transition for people and mm-hmm. and a, a fraught uh, process for other streamers. So I'm starting to think, what's life after Tarkov look like? And that's why I, I'm doing more and more, um, you know, playing other games here and there apart from Tarkov and trying to branch out and put it dip a toe in uh, other other waters and see yeah. what else is out there. Uh, but then. Uh, I don't know what comes after after that, so it's it's hard to see what's next. And then, what is it for? Um, uh, and I guess I'm I'm also leaning more into the the mental health aspect mm-hmm. and that sort of stuff, and seeing where that goes. So I love being part of podcasts and interviews yeah. and articles and things like that. So this is a big part of that, big part of the future for me. And I don't know That's if awesome. I want to have my own podcast, but that leaning into um, the sort of um, what does it mean to be a streamer and mm. and how can we better better serve uh the community uh and uh, you know in real world stuff and real life stuff and i want to want to do more and more of that as well i'm not sure where that'll take me but uh but that's sort of a, a future direction as well yeah 100 percent. and it, it, if you made a podcast and you need advice or whatever it may be yeah. feel free you have a bunch of people Behind your back, I'm sure that would love to help you. You know, I, I'm sure you've talked to uh, uh, Tardux before. Great guy. He's a uh, very yeah. good friends with Pestilli. Um yeah. it, It's a great field. It really is. And talking about, you know, getting getting to know people's story is why I do this. You know, like, it, mm. like it's mm. not about the numbers, right? Like, I, I've been very open and honest. I've never made a cent off of this. You know, to me, mm. this is about 
sharing stories like your own, you know, where you started from and, and getting to know people and getting, you know, let's say somebody's favorite, you know, creator is on here and they get to learn about them and, and, and get to know them on a deeper personal level. So I'm glad that yeah. you mentioned that. And I'm glad that, you know, you, you're considering getting into it. You know, it's a, it's a great yeah. field, you know, it's really cool. Mental health, you know, is very, very important, especially in today's world. Um, yeah. and it's kind of like what you said, right? Like when you, when I first asked you a question, you mentioned how you don't think it necessarily into the future too much. Seem to seem to me that you think in the present a little bit, you know, mm -hmm. think, mm -hmm. think about what's happening right now, rather than, you know, what's going to yeah. happen, right? You look at what you have rather than what you want, you know, and I think that's a very yeah. good outlook to have 100%. Yeah. 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 100%. Yeah. And I want to say thank you for yeah. making this podcast and, and it's a real uh, service to the community and I get a lot out of it. Yeah. Uh, I think you're a great interviewer and, and the content you're creating is I, really valuable. I try. It's a little, I'll be honest, this is one of my hardest podcasts, yes, Mr. Toast, because I had a coffee at 6.30, so I'm kind of zooming right now. You know, I'm used to, you know, kind of winding down a little bit, you know, but I'm zooming. I'm off the walls, you know, I'm moving back and forth. Um, but we're not done just yet. I do want to get to chat questions. But before I do that, I want to get to uh, what I like to call speed questions. This is kind of like... Uh, kindergarten you know when you were in class and then you know, what's your favorite color gym you know mm -hmm. gym you know like all those sort of things so i'm gonna ask you some speed questions uh you can answer them fast or you can answer them how however slow as you want but uh first one winter or summer mr toast are you a big winter or summer <sighs> guy let's see uh summer summer okay. yep. summer summer's a good like time cold yeah. yeah, well, how cold does it get in Australia, out of curiosity? Look, it doesn't freeze, so people call us light, well, lightweights in Australia because yeah. it never freezes. But our our um, most buildings don't have a central heating. Uh, so, really? Yeah, because because it doesn't freeze and, and it's warm a lot mm. of the times. So so we we're underheated, and that's why we really feel the cold, even though it doesn't uh, freeze. Really? Oh my God! Yeah. I never really thought about it that way. I didn't know that either. So that's that's mm. interesting. I'm learning things myself. Um, dog or cat person? Toast. Oh, I'm both, but I I think I love cats more. Okay. I I like I like having to earn the relationship yeah. with with a pet. Yeah, yeah one hundred. And uh, we were talking about this on chat the other day. You know, dogs like instantly love you. Cats like they'll hate you sometimes. You know, like it's yeah. like. You wake up and your cat, your cat's mad at you for whatever reason. You know, it's 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 all about building that relationship. Beach or mountains? Which I actually had to do Ooh. research before you answer this. I I had to do research. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I didn't know that there was a, a like I I don't know. I'm so uncultured. I didn't realize <laughs> that there was as many mountains in Australia as I thought. I thought it was just all like desert and you know fucking tumbleweeds and scorpions that's you know that's tv There's, for you they yeah. all show the desert and nobody lives in the desert yeah. we all live in cities and forests and and there are mountains they're not very high um, yeah. our our land is anciently old so they're mm. really worn down so our highest mountain doesn't even have year-round snow um yeah. that's that's how low our mountains are compared to new really? zealand has amazing mountains with mm. glaciers and everything uh, wow. So we, we, but it's such a big country that, mm. that there's everything here. Yeah, okay. tropical okay. rainforest and wetlands and and you know Tasmania is really cold and down the south because it's a long way from the equator. But we got a bit of everything. Yeah, so but I'm sure the only part you see on TV is the desert. Okay, well I'm sure you're a beach person then, right? You, uh, well, actually, uh, no, I'm more of a mountain person. Okay. I, I I don't love the beach. Uh, I love that line from uh, Eternal Sunshine of the, Spotl of the Spotless Mind where he says, I don't get sand. It's just tiny little rocks. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm I not mean... a sand person. I'm not a, I don't like lying in the sun, yep. burning away. I can't see my devices. The screen yep. is too, not bright enough. <laughs> um, you know, uh, the, you get sand in your in yeah. your battery you know you forget your battery pack and it's like uh, yep. you got nothing you're just on the beach with nothing yep and then <laughs> I, if you I'd do go swimming out. you get sand on your feet and they, uh -huh. it doesn't come off and it's just like impossible to wash away oh my god i i yeah. love the beach but i'm a mountain guy too so i'm glad that you uh -huh. are as uh -huh. well um favorite place to travel <laughs> or oh, favorite uh -huh. place you've been or you know wherever uh, I love travel that challenges me where I learn uh, a new culture. I like culture shock in my travel. I was still chasing that trip when I was 21. Oh, yeah. Uh, so I love going places that challenge me 
Mm-hmm. And, uh, and make me think about uh, and and make me think about the world differently. Yeah, I, I want to go back to Egypt. That's the white place I want to go okay. back to, the ancient Egypt, the pyramids, the culture, ancient Egyptian culture, mm. so amazing, so different from ours, and so fascinating and yeah. beautiful. And and uh, I, I really really want to go back there one day. Okay, okay, fair enough. Um, hamburgers or hot dogs? Oh, this man. is an American question. This is an American <laughs> question, but like, if you had to choose, I love both. yeah, I love both. I, I probably eat hamburgers more often, mm-hmm. but good hot dogs are so difficult to find in Australia. Okay. We have terrible hot dogs. Really? So I, I have more of a hankering. If I see a decent hot dog, mm. I will have that. Yeah, okay. yeah, they're they're a tough thing to find. A good one. We're getting good burgers in Australia, but hot dogs. Yeah, so I'm gonna really? put that high. Okay. Rare. So have you had? So American food, I got. I have to ask, like, when yeah. you were in Vegas, yeah. did you have a burger or do you have like a exquisite steak or some shit? You know, I, is I there had some amazing meals in fancy restaurants really? in, in Vegas? But but traveling to the U.S., I generally I want to try the fast food because we we Please. grew up in American yes. culture in movies and stuff. So it's like. I watched uh, Harold and Kumar go to White Castle. I'm like, what is this White Castle place? I yeah. gotta try White Castle. Like the whole movie they're trying to yeah. get there. There's something I've never seen this thing as. as so I want to go to White Castle just because I want to. I want to be part of the meme. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I want to go. I want to go to all the terror. I want to go to Chick Fil A. I want to go to Taco Bell. You've I never. Go so to- you've never had a Chick Fil A. I've never had a Chick Fil A. Oh well, I mean that's yeah. reasonable. I'm not gonna get on. You know, if Americans <laughs> said that, I'd call them crazy. Okay, I'm just gonna point that out. But <laughs> Chick Fil A is the greatest fast food restaurant that we have in America. Here, some would say Culver's. If you've heard of Chat, you know, talking oh. back and forth with Culver's. A lot of people say that's also one of the best. But Chick Fil A is uh. a go-to. Oh my God, I love it yeah. so much. Yeah. If you yeah. if you ever want to come over here to small town mm. Pennsylvania toast. All right, we got a room. Mama Gino will make dinner every night, and I can take you to lunch every day, and we try every single fast food po- place. Just let me know. All right, we have well, it all around here. Yeah. I didn't know you are in PA. I, I, I spent half of grade 12 in Bucks County, Pennsylvania. Oh, yo, really? Yeah, I'm, uh-huh. I'm about uh-huh. uh, an hour and a half away from Bucks. So I'm, I'm down near yeah. Gettysburg. I'm down near the state line. So, Man. like, right where Maryland yeah. and PA meet, that's uh-huh. exactly where I am. So... That's crazy. Well, my mom uh, specialized in American Civil War history in mm. college. And so when we were there, we, we toured all through Gettysburg and oh, Harper's Ferry. Oh, my and, God. Uh, Harper's Antietam Ferry is be- and Yep. Harper's Ferry is sick. Reenactors and everything. And um, we got the whole lowdown on the history because she was oh, mad that's keen sick. on it. So great memories of tra- uh, driving through. And, and you go through Pennsylvania Dutch country. Yep. and. See the Bucks Amish County. on there. Yeah, Bucks County has that. some Amish, right? Or is that it does. It has a lot of covered bridges, mm-hmm. has a bit of Amish, and yeah. we're like near we had this pumpkin patch. I was there in fall, there were pumpkin patches yep. everywhere. Yeah. Like, all that sort of stuff is semi rural. Um and uh yeah, it was it was an amazing experience. Beautiful uh, place. Years, it it is. Uh, PA, P, people outside of PA hate on PA, but I mean Nobody hates PA more than anybody that lives in PA, so they they try and out hate us. That's for sure. But um, Toast, I wanted to it's first different. off, it's yeah, different, but it's great. Yeah, yeah no, it, PA is wonderful. <laughs> United States, I'm sure you've had a fair share of good moments over here. But I've always wanted to yeah. go to Sydney. I think that's where yes. I want to go to next. Sydney is a beautiful oh, place. So beautiful. Yeah. It's stunning. It's as stunning as you think it's going to be and yeah mm-hmm. yeah you'll love it yeah okay all right well that's next on my bucket list 100 percent is sydney mm-hmm. australia toast i wanted to say thank you for being on the podcast i want to uh, oh. before i you know where you are you know where you stream out whatever it may be i do want to get the chat questions but first off i just wanted to say thank you for being on the podcast i'm i'm just now finishing my coffee which is rare but um i wanted to say <laughs> thank you for being on the podcast um, I'll get to chat questions so they can start posting them. But um, yeah. I'm very, very thankful that you you, you can be on the podcast oh, here today. It's well, it's such a great it. oh, experience being able me. to talk talk to somebody yeah. very like minded, and uh, it's just really, really cool. So um, we'll get to chat no, questions. Uh, Crutch, of course, my coffee guy is asking about coffee. Go figure. Uh, hearing about mm-hmm. how you started liking coffee, my question is: Do you have a homemade espresso machine, and if so, what kind? 
Uh, yeah, I have a uh, a Spanish uh, espresso machine that I okay. got 20 years ago. It's stainless steel. It's called a Seiko Via Venezia. They don't make them anymore. I've had it service. I have a guy who services it every few years, and he says, don't let go of this machine. They don't mm -hmm. make them like this anymore. It's a beautiful machine, and so it does espresso and has a steam attachment for oh, uh, sounds... milk because I drink cafe latte, so yeah. a shot of espresso and then foamed milk. Uh, and oh um, my God. yeah, that so sounds good. so good. I'm, I'm, I'm never, I've actually never had an espresso. So mm. that's something that I definitely need to try. I've always gone to Starbucks and gotten like a vanilla sweet cream cold brew and stuff, you know, summertime, right? Like I can't yeah. imagine how hot it is down there in Australia. But wait, hold on. Am I, am I wrong about this? Is it opposite season, uh, there in Australia yeah. than it is in it's America winter, right now? It's winter right, it's winter now. Winter yeah, it's right winter now, now for you guys, yeah. right? Uh -huh. Oh my yep. God. That's such a culture shock to me. So how, so we grew up what's the weather out? Italian culture. Well, it's, uh, right now it's cold. Uh, you need a jacket and it's a okay. little rainy right now. Wow. Um, it, it, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's, it's cool to call. I had the heater on, uh, this morning, uh, to, to warm the place up, yeah. but uh, we grew up with a lot of Italian culture. We had a lot of, uh, Italian people come out to Australia after the second world war and we encourage that. So we have a lot of Italian and Greek culture here. So that's where we got the espresso culture. So we have, uh, a little Italy uh, mm -hmm. downtown where they, they have amazing espresso and, um, and all of that sort of stuff and cappuccino and so that we, I grew up with all that sort of coffee culture. Yeah. So uh, that was always around and then it became really popular, mm -hmm. uh, to have, um, to have that. Um, and, uh, now we're sort of renowned for having a, a, a really snobby coffee culture, yeah, but really we're sure. just really into, into coffee. Yeah. No, nothing wrong with that. I love coffee. I have a whole podcast around it. You know how it is. Yeah. Um, I'm yeah. trying to see if I have any more, uh, chat questions. I'll be honest with the with the whole um I'm sure you've seen it with the whole like Tarkov thing going on late wipe and stuff it's been very hard to get questions out of chat sometimes so uh -huh, uh -huh. um but I I did want to ask a question myself um I brought up last time I was talking to Pest Silly and uh, mm. he, I was talking like Starbucks versus Dunkin and that that's mm. not necessarily a popular thing there in Australia you guys have your own brand. I'm forgetting the name of it though. There's, it, it's a very popular coffee shop in Australia. Oh, coffee, yeah. Um, we we t the best coffee in Australia tends to be uh, small places that aren't a chain. So there mm. are chains, uh, and I, yeah, I think with Pestle you talked about Gloria Jeans is one of them. And, oh uh, yeah. There's, uh, th there are Starbucks, but Starbucks never really caught on in Australia. Um, it, st there are so Starbucks closed a whole lot of stores in Australia. Uh, a couple of years ago, they still have them in the tourist areas because when people are, you know, from overseas, it's a name that they recognize. So they'll go there. So the Starbucks only really thrives in in, in tourist areas rather mm -hmm. than uh, local areas. But the, the best uh, the best coffees in Australia, in Melbourne are uh, places like St. Ali, um, uh, Mary. Um, oh, what is it? Uh, there's a Mary one. There's a couple. I have industrial beans, but they're all mm -hmm. little roasters that don't have big oh, distribution. Okay. They're just local to yeah. one state or one city, uh, and they tend to be the best ones. And when when a bunch of people, mm -hmm. bunch of often young people, get together, get a roasting machine, start a business, and they're really <laughs> intentional about it, and they're they really you know have a community around their coffee and. Uh, and uh, yeah, some of them get bigger. There's one called Grinders, which started like that and now has yeah. distribution. Okay. You can find their coffee in a, in a, a supermarket as well. But okay. uh, there, there's lots of small ones. Mm -hmm. You tend to go to your local, every neighborhood. Uh, I had to ask around. I just moved to this neighborhood a few months ago. I had to ask around, where's the <laughs> where's the go-to coffee place? Yeah. Uh, and you get out and it's and it's not even on the main street it's in a back street yeah industrial beans is not far from me and it's in a back street okay uh, it used to be a factory uh and they have a big roaster in there oh and a, that's and a sick so, well i mean yeah. it's it's fresh i'm sure it is you know it's right <laughs> it's uh -huh. right in your town right <laughs> like I, I wish small town pa we don't we don't be having the coffee roasters um <laughs> a, a chat question how was foreign travel back when you were in your 20s? It really blew up after COVID, and I'm curious how it was back in the day. Uh, so before the internet, uh, and even before mobile phones, travel yeah. was tough. So that that one year I traveled, um, 
backpacking, that was word of mouth. You got you bought a guidebook like we Lonely Planet was a new company then, and we mm. had a Lonely Planet guide to Africa, um, and it was just word of mouth. You um, uh, electronic cards weren't international at that time, so you had to buy traveler's checks uh, and travel with them. So I would buy US dollar traveler's checks in Australia and then carry like thousands of dollars worth of traveler's checks with me in yeah. a money belt on on you oh my God. Uh, at all times. You're yeah. ca basically carrying cash. Uh, you know, you, you, you can, uh, you, you, each country you go to, you go to a bank once mm -hmm. and it was, you had to line up, fill in forms, show ID mm -hmm. and get, get cash out. And, and that would last you for a couple of weeks. Uh, so it was, That's it was tough cool. getting and communicating with back home. Uh, there's no internet. So mm -hmm. I'm mailing letters and postcards home. And then for them to communicate with me, I would say next month, I'm going to be in Egypt you can write to me at this post office and they will hold the mail for me. It was called That's Post Restaurant. And they would post uh, the post office in Cairo, uh, Post Restaurant to me, and that's how I would get news from home when I was traveling. So it was tough. Yeah. Uh, I, I phoned home uh, once or twice in the 10 month trip and it cost an absolute fortune and was quite <laughs> oh unreliable. My gosh. Yeah. yeah. Like $10 a minute or something like that, which back what? then was. Oh my you God. Know, Fifty dollars a minute or something. Yeah, like it was, yeah. You would you would keep, you would try and keep it to three minutes because it was costing so much money. Jeez. Yeah. Oh my god, I couldn't even. I would start stuttering and then hang up. You know, like damn, yeah. I can, I don't got the yeah. money for that, right? Like, yeah. Oh yeah. man, another yeah. chat question. As someone who went to Japan and was super shocked, what was the largest culture shock you experienced while traveling? Uh, Japan is a great culture shock. I, I yeah. I've traveled to, I just had a five day stopover in Japan a few years ago okay. and absolutely loved it, but it, it is super different. It's, mm -hmm. uh, so what, what's the question? The largest culture shock, yeah. uh, I guess that morning waking up in Cairo, the, I, I, we arrived in Cairo from Australia at midnight, did through all the passport stuff, caught a taxi into town. Mm -hmm. And that taxi ride was the most terrifying taxi ride I've ever had. <laughs> Uh, the guy was just, there was like a six lane highway <laughs> and there were lanes marked, but nobody seemed to know they were there. <laughs> All of the, my, our taxi and everyone else were just drifting left and right. And there was no signaling. He just had his hand <laughs> on the horn uh, the entire time. And everyone else did too. Uh, and it was terrifying. And there were traffic lights that everyone just breezed through. It's like these traffic lights were left behind by a different civilization and had no meaning anymore. <laughs> and th this is my introduction yeah. to uh, this culture. And next day, it's like crossing the street. You couldn't wait for a light to change because the traffic just never stopped. You just had to do what the locals are doing. They just walked out into the traffic with purpose, and the cars would drive around them. That was oh the only way to cross God. the street. What? And it's like, holy cow, this is not what I didn't. Yeah. No one tells me this. <laughs> this is just what life is like here. Yeah. It's like those lines and lights, they're just, yeah. no one knows what they're for. They were left behind by yeah. some ancient civilization, you know. <laughs> they're welcome to the, but the track is moving so slowly yeah. that it's sort of, it's easy for them to weave around. Everyone has equal rights in traffic in mm. Cairo or in Nairobi or any of these sorts of places. And it was, that, was, that was a huge culture yeah, shock. Yeah, I'm sure. I wish I, I want to travel outside of the States so badly. It's just, it was, America is such a big country. I go to California I, and I'm I culturally shocked. Yeah. You know, I like you have so many states, you you yeah. can't you can't travel to them all in your lifetime, yeah. let alone outside the country. So yeah. I really got got it when I was there. When, when you're outside America, you think, why are they so um, you know myopic? Why are they so yeah. uh, you know have no such little knowledge of other countries compared to us? Whereas we grew up in a small country, looking at the big countries, going, oh. Look at yeah. all the shiny things out there, and where all the TV comes from the States and from the UK and mm -hmm. from Europe. So we we grow up with much more knowledge of the outside world than you guys. But once you get there, it's like, ah, oh, this is a really big place. Yeah, this is a really diverse place. Mm -hmm. There is a lot going on here. I can imagine just not having the bandwidth to mm -hmm. even know about 
what's going on outside this country because yep. this country is so big. 100%. I just took a day trip yesterday or two days ago. I, I, it's the reason that I, the script was a little late and I took a day trip, an hour and a half drive um, from one part of PA to another part of PA. Didn't even like scratch the surface on how big Pennsylvania was. Like I drove to this specific area and if you're looking at it on a map, I probably drove like a centimeter. Like it was, it was yeah. just, it was, it was crazy, uh -huh. but it's, it, America's massive. So it's just, it's part mm -hmm. of the, part of the process. Um, one last mm -hmm. question. How did you deal with language barriers before Google translate? So you mentioned earlier <laughs> other, other languages and stuff. How did you deal with that? Yeah. Oh man, that's most of my travel was before Google Translate. Yeah. Uh, so you used to get a phrase book, uh, mm. and and uh, you'd uh, I try and learn. You, you can and you can get away with quite a lot from mm. knowing five words and and then pantomime. <laughs> yeah. You can you can do amazing amounts. You can even ask directions. You can order food in a restaurant. Just by knowing, so I each country I went to, I'd try and learn uh, yes, no, please, thank you, hello, goodbye, mm -hmm. um, and, and uh, you know what? You don't use yes very often, but boy, do you use no a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, and uh, you, 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 you know, you, you try and learn a few of those words and then the rest, yeah, you'd have a phrase book. And okay. it's and it have phonetics in it, yeah. and it have all the common, uh, you know, the common things yeah. you would need traveling to do with. And there'd be a section in the phrase book for restaurant, another one for hotel, mm -hmm. another one for post office because you're spending time at the yeah. post office, uh, another one for bank, you know. And there'd be stock phrases, and the rest would be, you know, pantomime and and. You, you, but also, I I learned French uh, in uh, grade nine and ten, mm -hmm. so. Uh, I, whenever I went to a French speaking country, uh, which there are a few in, in Africa, like ex French colonies mm -hmm. and a few around Asia, I, I try and use my uh, grade 10 French and that would not go well, but I'd really enjoy trying. <laughs> yeah, 100%. <laughs> it's like, I'll tell you what, the biggest part for me, I learned, uh, I took three years of Spanish. And, um, uh -huh. you know, here in small town PA and, and around us, we actually have a lot of. Uh, you know, um, Hispanics and stuff and people that speak mm. um, Spanish. And when I hear them talk, it's the fastest thing on planet Earth. Yeah. And I'm sure it's the yeah. same way when they hear, you know, somebody that doesn't speak English hears me talk and they're like, holy shit, I can't understand this guy. You know, but yeah. like, that's my biggest problem is like, I can hear it well, I can read it phenomenal. But yeah. if you're it, you you got me fucked up speaking it like it's hard you know that, that's what was great about uh, I I forget about it in in France I can't keep up at all but in Uganda which was a French colony they don't speak they speak French as badly as me because it's like their third or fourth language it's like it might be uh, known but not very well yeah that, that, uh, so so French uh, I went great with French in, in uh, you know, uh, French colonies, yeah. ex-French colonies. Uh, but but in France, yeah, they speak way too fast. Okay. Well, that's 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 that, you know, speaking <laughs> French and, and going to different countries. Toast, uh, it has been a pleasure, man. I apologize uh, for taking two hours, two hours of nah. your time on a Sunday, but it has been a pleasure. I'm so, so thankful that you were you chose to... Uh, spend your your morning time with me. I appreciate it. Yeah. I hope you can go get some coffee and breakfast after this or something like that, yeah. whatever you yeah. Australians do down there. Um, well, now I'm going to tell all my friends I had coffee with Gina. <laughs> well, I can't wait to see you because I'll can. I i see you at San Diego now. So I, yeah. I can't wait to give you a big hug. You know how I'll it is. Great. You know, it's, it's going to be, be awesome. Um, before yeah. we end the podcast, Mr. Toast, where can we find you again? Platform, schedule, tell us everything. You can find me on Toast Rack TV on every platform. So I'm on Twitch every day. I'm also streaming on YouTube every day these days. You find all my videos there. I'm on Twitter, on Instagram, and uh, you can also find me on Facebook. I'm awesome. even doing TikToks and YouTube shorts these days. Yes, Got a new editor, Xanadu, doing a great job. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's a lot of fun as well. So to this, this is a Toast Rack. If you haven't seen a Toast Rack, it's yep. a device from a hundred years ago to make toast fancy, uh, to present it on a, 
restaurant mm -hmm. table or something, but they're completely useless devices. It makes your toast go cold. Why would you want a toaster? <laughs> I thought they were hilarious. Oh, that's um, awesome. That's that's why I'm toaster. I don't know why I'm toaster at TV. <laughs> that's the name I chose 20 years ago for Xbox Live, and now look at me <laughs> that's awesome well look at you indeed mr toast you started from nothing and now you're here man you're on coffee with gino i thank you again yeah. man thank you so much for being on the podcast i appreciate you so much man and you have a you have a great rest of your day all right thank you, you bye too. bye you as well i will see you in san diego soon brother i will oh, see I it's coming very very man. soon see you then toast have a good peace. one homie peace 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 bye bye, -bye. All right, man. What a good episode, bro. What a good episode. Um, if you guys are from uh, or hearing me right now and you guys are from Toast Rack stream or whatever stream, that was a uh, episode with Mr. Toast Rack himself. Uh, don't forget to check out the Coffee with Gino Twitter. It's Coffee with Gino with one O instead of three. And then uh, the TikTok is still banned, by the way, in case you, you guys are curious. Um, and as always, uh, stay safe. Stay caffeinated. And I'm going to get dinner. You have a great rest of your day and have a good night. And I will see you guys next time. Peace.